Today I've got 21 Christmas decor ideas for you to try and 22. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. I'm going to take some of this ribbon that I got on clearance. Well, it's not ribbon, it's actually like a rope. And I think I got it from Walmart. And this is a ornament from Dollar Tree. Very pretty snowflake. Then we have this wallpaper, these little like panels of wallpaper that come from Dollar Tree and they're like a peel and stick, real easy to use. And this is a sign that I'm repurposing that I made for fall last year. It's just two pieces of um, the long signs glued together on the back with popsicle sticks. Okay, so now I'm just going to turn these in the way that I would like for them to be on the sign. And I'm going to line them up here and then just use my rotary blade and cut them off on the bottom. It did slide and my husband was talking to me. I got a little distracted and I cut too much. But that's not going to be a problem because I have trim for this, so it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Now I'm just going to peel off that first little panel like the directions say on the back. I'm lining it up on the side. Just going to hold it down and then get ready to grab the next piece. And before I press it down, I'm going to grab my long wooden ruler and just press it flat as I pull the backing away. If you do it like this, you won't have the bubbles and things like that. It'll just lay completely down and there won't be a chance for any air to escape, get bubbly in there. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to peel the little strip off first, line it up, press my ruler down, peel that up, and then press it out as I am peeling it. I'm just going to lay it right over the top instead of cutting it off. I had a little excess where I got out of line here, so I'm just going to use this little blade and cut that off. Okay, and it looks good so far. You see where I've got that extra little gap up there on the top? It'll be covered though. All right, so since I did that, I've decided to add a piece of rope here and use my other, my little white trim also. I'm just going to use my glue gun and protecting my fingers. I'm going to go not on the edge, but rather close to the edge, just kind of allowing for the width of that rope. And I'm going to press it down into the edge of the board. And I do cut that tape off later. By the way, I don't think I have that recorded, but there's some tape on the end of the rope. It just keeps it from fraying. But I do take that off once it's glued down, so it will look better. All right. And I'm going to go all the way to the corner. Now, I'm using a clip to hold that corner there. And it's rather difficult with a thicker rope to make a tight square corner. But, um, and so it kind of curves a little bit. It doesn't bother me. If it bothers you, you might want to try like a thinner rope or a jute or something like that. Um, but there is a solution for that because you can kind of see the edge of the board underneath it behind the rope you see there before I clamped it, but I'm going to fix that. Don't worry. Same process here. I'm just going to start in the corner and I'm going to go around. And this time I'm just going to put the bead of glue right next to that rope and on the board. And that way we don't have any squishing out and making a mess. We're just going to continue around all the way on the inside. And this gives it a little bit, bit of an extra layered look. And I like it. I think that it, the colors of the ropes together, they kind of reflect what's going on in the snowflake. So I think they look good together. But you can tell me what you think. Okay. So we're going to go around and around and around. Just like that. Until we get back in the corner. Now when we get in the corner, you can take your scissors, kind of cut it a slant. And then put some glue inside of the pieces of rope that's still there. And then you can just press it down and it won't come unraveled. Okay, so you see the corner here? I'm going to take my little bull nose pliers, for those who are asking, that's what they're called, and just cut the corners off of each corner. 
All right, so with the snowflake, I couldn't decide if I wanted to keep that ribbon on there or not, and I just decided to take it off. It needs a little bit of help. There's a little bit of issue here. I'm just going to put a piece of tape on the back. We're going to cover up the hole that's in the front. I'm just kind of scratching it down with my fingernail so it won't come off. I'm going to take some of this lightweight spackling and just go right down in that little hole to help cover it up. It's not completely camouf camouflaged now, but it's better. And just using the back of my rubber spatula as a scraper, I just take the excess right off. If you don't put the tape on the back, it'll just squish right out the back. So I noticed that the Believe word was not centered, and it was kind of driving me nuts a little. So very, very carefully, I just popped it right off there. Look at that. Now I'm just kind of measuring to see where is going to be the center. So I can get my snowflake relatively in the center of this sign. I'm just using a pen. Um, that was the closest thing. I do find a pencil later, but pen is what I have. So now I have a little guide. And I can place this back down right in the correct spots. So that's what I'm going to do right here. Looking for my little guidelines and just popping it back down. Just pressing it and I'm just taking a little time to remove little extra spider webs and stuff off of it from the, the glue, you know, the glue webs. I'm just pressing it down really well. Now, since I want to try to make this a little bit straighter, I'm just taking my ruler and then a pencil, marking it. And under that B2, so that it goes right back where it needs to go. A little fancy glue work there. And then I'm going to flip it back over, line it up with those little marks I made, and then press it down as well. I like how they did this piece. So, you know, thumbs up for Dollar Tree because that, that little piece of the metal sign has like a little rusty tarnish on it and it looks really good. I think they have these in a smaller too, but I like the big one for this. Okay, so I have these little ornaments, which I also think came from the Dollar Tree, but I'm not certain because I took, took the packaging off of it. And I was trying to think of how I would want these to go on my sign, but I decided that I wanted them kind of centered on the sides of Believe. So, and they're puffy, like the little pillows, kind of stuffed. So I'm trying to hold them down so that they will glue down straight instead of trying to roll off to the side. Kind of making sure that they're where they're supposed to be. And then once the glue is dried, this is how it looks. And then I'm just gonna use a simple hanger on the back. What do you think about this one? All right, so I have some of my antiquing wax. I have another one of these little metal signs. This is a little breadboard that I thrifted and sanded just a touch. Just use my little foam sander. It is about a, looks like about a nine and a half by a maybe four and a half, four and a quarter. And then a little tiny wreath. This is the ribbon that I was thinking about using from the other project and then a little bit of greenery so I'm just going to use a wet wipe here I'm going to get a little bit of that antiquing wax and place down on there going to rub it in just a bit kind of blot it and then start blotting that on to the sign I want to make it look a little more aged because if you remember the snowflake in the beginning it was aged so I want to give it kind of a matching look and you can do this by just kind of layering it on and that's what I did. I added a little bit lighter and then a little bit more until I got the look that I wanted. And then it's important to let that dry completely. You can see it's just a little bit of tarnish on there. While it is drying by the fan, I am going to fix up my wreath here. I want my wreath. This is just a little piece of, I think it was muscadine vine. I picked this out of the yard a couple of years ago. I made a large wreath and then I made a couple of little ones. And I'm just going to wrap a piece of that same pick that we've been using, working from that same piece, really stretching our dollar. I'm just going to use a little bit of floral wire. I'm trying to get next to the inside of it. I'm sorry that I'm a little out of frame. I was really focusing on what I was doing. 
and you're just going to wrap that around. Then I'm going to cut off some of these berries really carefully. I don't want any that look white because I'm not going to frost this. It's going to be, I want my red berries, deep red berries. So I'm only going to put them on the side where the greenery is. Now I'm going to leave them in little bundles. And that's all we'll be putting on that little wreath. That's it. So I thought, okay, well, I could use this bow. And I even cut dovetails in it thinking that I might would use it. But I just, I don't know. I keep thinking about it, and, but I just can't do it. So I'm going to use this Dollar Tree ribbon. I'll tell you about this Dollar Tree ribbon. It's very pretty. It's nice, but it frays terribly when I you can see already the frays in the edges of it when I'm tying my bows it just comes apart it'll stay the bow will stay together but all of the edges just start fraying off so I had to go through there and pick those off trim that off of there uh, and I did trim my tails just a slant you just look at that look at that stuff all over the place you know it's a good thing I like rustic didn't bother me so much but you know I still had to work on it a little so one more little simple bow just like that to go on top trim trim then I'm going to glue down my joy it's all dry y'all know joy you know I love that word something we should strive for every single day in everything we do you gotta have joy happiness comes from within and it you know it's something that Nobody can give you. No. Okay, so then you place this down here, here, and wherever else you want to put it so that it will stay, and then press it down and hold it for a while so that it won't pop up. Because mine was not flat on the back. Then just decide where you want your little bow to be. And I just kind of tucked it behind there with a little bit of glue that'll hold it in place now I wanted a hanger in my breadboard so I'm just gonna take another piece of jute and just loop it over and then tie one knot and slide that knot close to the end and then take the loop press it through that hole so I was happy to see that it actually fit and then press the knot through the loop and pull it and there you go there it is what do you think not bad huh i'm still not completely sure how i'm going to be doing my house this year on a hard time deciding what i want to do what are you doing in your house you know, are you doing farmhouse or rustic or glam or modern? I'd love to know um, how other people are doing their trees and their homes this year. For the first project, we're going to start off with some of this gorgeous fabric that I got from Dollar Tree. It's got little red trucks with a black background. And this is in the Crafter Square section. I hope you can find this. It's so pretty. Some Rust-Oleum flat paint. It's white. I'm going to use a summer sign from Dollar Tree. I love the tag signs. And then I have some thrifted and some Walmart and I'm not sure where the other red ribbon came from. Then I'm just going to have some random picks that I might be using. And we're always going to start off by removing tags and hangers. Give this a good coat of spray paint, only one coat. And then once it's dry, we're going to flip it over on our fabric and trim this down to fit. I'm going to leave it up on the side so that you can fold it over and hot glue it down. Be sure you protect your fingers. You might not get glue on them this way, but you can certainly feel the heat from the glue. You can easily flip your corners in like this to make them nice and neat. Or do it any way that you feel like you want to do it. And we're going to go all the way around just like that. And 
And when you get to the top, it's just an easy fold over and a little bit of glue, and it's sealed in there. That sign is completely covered by that fabric. I'm just going to trim off a little bit of this extra stuff here to make it kind of flat in the back and use a piece of this uh, paper and cut it down and put it on the back. Now I'm going to take this Believe sign or word. Um, there, It comes in a three pack. And I'm going to take it outside and spray paint it with that white one good coat is all it needed. And then decide what type of ribbons I want to use to make a really pretty bow to go on top. Oh yes, I remember now. This red ribbon was thrifted. I'm going to do about 18 inches, maybe a little bit over when you see me cutting here. Not exact. And I'm going to dovetail both sides of it. And I'll be doing the same process with each of the other ribbons. Just cutting, I think I probably cut two of each. We'll see when I start counting. So this is what's called a funky bow. Very easy to make and you're going to be happy with the results, I think. It's important that you choose a wired ribbon for these bows. You're going to go halfway down after you folded it over, kind of pinch it in the middle, and then you're going to squeeze it tightly in that joint between your thumb and your forefinger. Same way here, go about halfway down, pinch it toward the center, tightly, and then squeeze it into your hand. Hold it in your hand. Same thing with the next piece, and I'm alternating pieces of ribbon, the different prints and designs, so that it will um, give us more variety of color in our bow. You're going to continue this process with the smaller ribbon there, that I think it's a one inch piece of ribbon. You don't have to squeeze that in the center. It, you, it'll just go right into your hand easily. Okay, so you can see I've tried to keep the exact same colors away from each other just like that and kind of disperse these colors and patterns evenly now when I first put this in my hand I put it next to the other one but you see I don't like the look so I'm just gonna pull it out and move it to the other side and so far I like the way this looks I love all the different patterns and textures so far now we have like a little bouquet you can use a twist tie, you can use a piece of uh, pipe cleaner, but I like to use my zip ties, especially for this particular bow. It's really thick where I'm holding it. It's very bulky right there. I did not take my hand off of that bow at all. I just used my other hand to wrap it around and then just pull that zip tie tight. Go ahead and cut the end off and then you can start fluffing that out. We're going to pull them away from the center and downward like petals on a flower away and down, away and down, just like that. Opening up your loops, and then here I need to adjust just a little. So I pull down just a little bit. If you get your zip tie on really tight, you won't be able to move it at all. I was surprised I could move it because that thing is on there tight. Flip it over and then start pulling these apart. And you want to do the same thing with the tails that you did with the loops above separate the patterns, flip over those patterns to make sure they're all the pretty sides or down for now so that when you flip it over they will be up. Just like that. Now just pull those pieces back out like you had them. Very easy to do and that's why it's important that you use a wired ribbon uh, otherwise everything's just going to be kind of flat. It's going to lay flat. We want a nice poofy bow. Isn't she pretty? Okay. Now, I'm going to put that Believe word back on there, and I thought maybe I would use a little bit of ribbon to help it stand out. Looks good like that, but I like to layer, so I'm going to put a little bit of this green over the last piece of that ribbon, just that scrap of ribbon I had left. I'm just going to trim the green down a little bit, make it look a little bit neater, and then protect my fingers and put a good bit of glue under the ribbon. Now it's going to press up through that ribbon on the bottom and catch the ribbon on the top. So it's all glued nicely down. Now I'm going to use some of this E6000. When it gets clogged, just run a little piece of wire down there and you can get it to work again. I'm going to squeeze a little bit here and there on the back of this Believe sign so it won't pop off. You know how metal is with hot glue. 
and then very quickly and carefully add some hot glue kind of eyeball where it ought to be and then press it down now we're going to add a good bit of glue in the center of that bow on the bottom and flip it over on the top wherever you want to put it mine's closer to the corner to the left corner there now do you feel like you can do this bow I think you can we're going to add just a little bit of greenery this is a thrifted pick that came from Dollar Tree and I well no Walmart and I'll be using this pick a few times in this video this greenery rather but you can get anything you want from the Dollar Tree anything you like I like this one it has a little bit of frosting on it just a little bit of frost tiny bit of glitter and then I'm just gonna tuck it in on that side and then I like the placement of it here on the other side going downward so I'm gonna place it there and this is what that tag sign will look like you can use it as a leaner on your cabinet if you would like or you can put a little hanger on the top you can use whatever type hanger you want but because this is a piece that is kind of out of balance meaning that if you put it right in the center it's going to lean to the side because of the heavy bow you might want to use something like this so that you can slide it back and forth on the nail till you get it hung exactly as now it should be to the next one this is number four we're going to make a little miniature red truck ornament this came from Dollar Tree it sure did here's some more of that Walmart ribbon that I showed you I have some scrap ribbons just a bunch from the thrift, the thrift store I have another mini ornament some of these little bottle brush trees probably came from Dollar Tree here's some mini ones that are dark green and then I have a couple of little pieces of randomness and a little piece of foam a little scrap we're gonna cut down the foam so that it will fit inside of that truck it's hollow in there all the way up to the front measure it out cut it up glue it down okay now we're gonna work on this little ornament cutting off the hanger I do end up putting in some um, spackling into that hole to fill it up but I'm measuring now to see how tall I want my little sign to be and using just a little scrap of wire here that I have it's kind of like a florist wire I would love to have you subscribe to this channel if you have not already we do lots of budget friendly DIYs and we try to do things that are unique and that bring us joy okay so we're gonna start just pressing those down into the back of that truck these already they had plastic stands originally but I removed those for a project I did last year I'm gonna make this tree look a little bit shorter by just going up about half an inch cutting it off pulling off the little extra little pieces there and getting down to the wire and then we're gonna stick that down into the foam too so so far we have two trees back there I'm gonna use a little bit of this apple barrel white paint and a little brush that also came from Dollar Tree and I'm going to put this on these green trees just to give it a frosted look because the other trees are snowy looking so we want them to kind of match like they've all come from the same place right they're in the back of that truck they all took the same trip from the tree farm there you go and then you got to be sure to let those dry see the difference be sure those are dry before you handle them it doesn't take long I dry my things in front of a fan cut the bottoms off of these then you have a wire just like the other little trees and you can place those down wherever you like I'm gonna place mine around the other trees there we go so far so good they're looking better we can put that sign in now I think it looks great for that okay so here's a bow you've already seen how we made the other ones I did this one the same way cute little bow and then I'm going to put a dot of glue on the top of the sign and just put that right up there pretty pretty simple 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 little bitty perfect for a tiered tray if you have a tall tiered tray just gorgeous okay so there are a couple of things you can do with this now you can leave it like this or you can continue to add and I'm gonna do this in layers so that you can choose how far you want to go with your little truck 
I've just folded this over, made one little loop in the middle, and then two tails. I'm using a little piece of floral wire to twist around the center. I'm going to do this tightly, and then take the excess off the, off the end so we're not poking our fingers. We're going to flare out the tails. Now, I saw this on a larger scale um, by Kathy of my DIY, and uh, so I'm going to use it here in my little arrangement. I'm just going to use another piece of that pick, hot glue right in the center of it, and then let it dry, and then we can use these as picks. And they look like, you know, just a little extra decoration in there. I decided that I would like mine to be dovetailed, so I went ahead and did that to the ends, placed it back in there. And I want them to look the same, so I'm going to do the same thing on the other one. You can use pre-made bows, anything you want to to use to embellish yours. Or you could use an entire bow, like the one I put on the sign, rather than using these little pick pieces. Whatever brings you joy. So since I have one on the back, I'm going to move one kind of diagonally from it up on the other side. Just like that. So here we have it so far, like this. I think that's cute. But we can keep going. I went ahead and used those little scraps of green picks I had. I put a little white paint on there and we're going to add some snowmen. These are mini ornaments that I got at the thrift store. And this truck has a little, like a dent in the top of it that was already there. It was made like that. I don't know if it was an error or not, but it's the perfect place for me to set a little snowman. So I'm just going to put some hot glue there and set my chosen snowman right down in it. There you go. He looks happy up there, doesn't he? It looks like somebody has taken their, their little truckload of trees to town and they're ready to sell them. And maybe they're sitting there with their hot chocolate or their coffee and they're, they've made a little snowman to keep them company while they wait. Okay, so if you want to add to the front of this truck a little wreath, you can do it with pipe cleaners. You know how to do that, very easy, which is what I've done here. And you can add a bow on top. You will see after I do that, that I decided I did not want the red and white on the front. I felt like it was too much with the bow pattern that I have here. So this is what it would look like if you chose to leave it this way. Cute, cute, no problem. Or you can take a piece, a little scrap piece that you have and be very, very, very careful. You have to hold this a long time now because it's going to try to flex apart. This has no wire in it. It's just the plastic. But once it is dried and cool, you can go ahead and put it on your truck and that's where I'm putting it. Now you can see the glue but you won't be able to once I get done. And I like this one better. See? The bow is going to go right on top of that. And I was praying for it not to pop back open once I put that hot glue on there. And it didn't! Yay! Okay. Precious. Oh my goodness, I'm having too much fun. So, while I'm still in the zone, I'm going to take some more of that white paint and just put that as a, I don't know, a little sprinkle of snow right there on the front of the truck. But now, we have to put snow on our truck, right? No snowman is going to be there with no snow. So, now I'm just going to put some snow on this truck. All around the little snowman, on the hood of the truck, and all the places that snow would naturally fall and catch on your vehicle. So, I'm kind of going above the hubs. I'm going to go above the tires, on the high points of the door. Places like that, just to give it a little bit extra. And I was scared to death to go too heavy handed, so I just did it a little at a time. But you can see there, I just took my finger and wiped away what I didn't like. And that was fine, and it did fine like that. My little, I had a camper trailer to go on the back, but it didn't fit right, so I just left it off. But this is what it looks like. Isn't it cute? Oh my goodness, this is so cute. This may be my favorite one of these projects. But I really like them all. What do you think? Brenda?
Another easy one. Okay, so I thrifted this very fuzzy, soft, comfy, fat yarn. It's blanket yarn. I've got some Dollar Tree twine there with some berries and a couple of pieces of wood scraps and then another one of those stars. Here's some more ribbon that coordinates with the stuff we've already been using. I'm going to take this cone and sit it down right on top of a piece of felt. I'm pretty sure you can get white felt at Dollar Tree. I think it's rolled up and it's in the craft section. So just a tad of the cooler temperature hot glue to go down on here because that foam will melt. I want to have a good base because I don't want to burn myself or have anything collapse. You can also wrap this in tape, but this is so much quicker. And I had it on hand, so that makes it great. All right, just folding it under, and I'm going to add a little bit of glue there. For the tip of it, I want to make it a little bit taller and thinner. So I'm just going to fold the tip over. But you can see what I'm doing with a little of the glue. And then I'm just going to start trying to form it as best I can to give it a little more of a cone type shape without having that flat top. And I'm just going to keep doing that with my glue and my fingers. You can buy me a coffee to show me some love. The link's in the description box below. Okay, so I'm just kind of pressing it with my fingers and you can see it looks kind of crazy, but it won't look like that when we're done. It does give a little more height to the tree though. All right, so I'm going to lay this down where it is slightly overlapping the edge so that you don't see the bottom of that foam. And then using a cooler temp glue, of course, and protecting my fingers tremendously. I'm gonna go around this tree just like this. I'm put that line close to the other line of yarn, that other row, and then pressing those together. In the end, if there are any spots that are a little bit bare, you can fill those in, just a little more glue, and just kind of pressing them together. That's the beauty of this fluffy yarn. It's like furry, it's got like a, you know, a blanket texture. It's easy, easy to work with. So I'll show you how we're gonna do the tip of it so that it actually sticks down. The glue needs to be really close to the row that is underneath it, just like this, and I'm pushing downward toward that row, rolling it kind of downward. Okay, so we're up to the top. I'm gonna add some glue here, and I'm just gonna kind of swirl it, almost like a cinnamon roll, on the top until all of that white is covered, and then just trim it off. You can use a little more hot glue there and just continue that little that little swirl. So see, I had a little gap and I just added some glue and then pressed it down. Little gap there, it's where it's trying to come apart. No problem, A little bit of glue, we can fix it. You can't see any of the white now, can you? And it looks like a little tree, a little fuzzy tree. Okay, so I'm gonna add some glue in the bottom, pretty much where I think the center would be, and I'm gonna use the stick for the trunk I'm gonna poke that in there, and then this little slice is gonna be the base. It's gonna hold the tree up, so be sure that your stand is big enough that your tree will not make it topple over. And I might just add that the cone is lightweight and this yarn is very lightweight. If you use anything that's heavier, like rope, you're gonna probably need a little more security to keep your tree from toppling over. All right, so we're gonna take some of these pit berries start unwinding it a bit, and I'm just gonna place a tiny bit, I mean, just a, just a snidge on this tree. And you can see that I'm just trying to hold it in place. I had a viewer, when I did a project before, who said that I could have used pins to hold something to styrofoam, and I thought, you know what, that is genius. I cannot remember who said it, but thank you very much because I remembered that and I'm going to be applying it in this project. I'm going to use my pins from my little vintage pin thing here and I'm going to go right where the berries meet. This is where the wire is a little thicker. It's wrapped in like a paper and I'm going to go right in between there and press it straight into my tree. And it holds it beautifully and I have no messy glue strings, nothing like that. It's just perfect. Look at that. Okay, so now I've decided that I want to use some ribbons on the top of the tree. Kind of give it a tree topper, if you will. So I'm going to do about 18 inches of the snowflake ribbon. Oh, that snowflake ribbon actually came from Big Lots. I said Dollar Tree, but it's from Big Lots. 
And we're going to make some very, very easy little shoelace bows. And you know how to do this. Make the two ears, wrap them around. Simple. However you make a little bow like this, you can do it. And I'm just working with it to make it small. I don't want anything that's going to overpower my tree. And I'm going to leave my tails long. I'm just twisting it to make sure that the gold is on the outside. And then we're going to do the same thing with this other little ribbon. Okay, then a little bit of hot glue. We can stick these two together. And then we'll use a pin to attach it to the tree right in the center. Perfection. I love it. I'm going to just kind of play with those little tails a little bit. And I keep struggling to get that one to turn over, but it will stay. It gave up the fight. And then I'm just cutting my little tails at an angle. You could dovetail them if you wanted, but they're so small. I thought just a little slant would be enough to make it look finished and loved. Now right in the bottom of this star, I'm going to put some hot glue and then press it down on the top toward the front near the bows. And that's how she's going to look. Look at that. Oh my goodness. That's so cute. So cute. And it's really making me want to do gray and white and silver and gold. And then here are... it was Bath and Body Works. So you can see all the supplies we're going to be using. I've got some picks. These are little salt and pepper shakers. Little deer. I have a little stuffed snowman with the little fur. And these jars came from Dollar Tree. Can you believe it? These canisters, they're really, really good. Hopefully you can find these at your store. There's a larger one and a smaller one. And in just a second, I'm going to measure these for you. Just to give you an idea, in case you don't find these, you can get a container that's close to that. I started off by looking for the little fish bowls, but I couldn't find them, so this is even better. Then I have some of this little miniature greenery stuff, and some snow, and a glass plate. And that also came from Dollar Tree. My kids are stomping around upstairs. As soon as I say I'm doing a voiceover, everybody get quiet. Everybody runs for the hills. Okay, so I'm going to use this satin nickel spray paint and do the plate and both of these tops. I'm going to let those dry. I'm going to take this sheet of styrofoam and it's about the same depth as the neck of my jar, so it's perfect. And I got that from the thrift store. I'm just going to press down. I don't want to have to guess here. I want it to be a nice snug fit because I don't want to have to glue this in. And I'm just going to press down with both until I get to my tabletop. And I started off by using my metal ruler here just to kind of score it, cut some little lines in here so it would be easier to work with the pieces one at a time. Works really well for cutting things. And then I started by taking my ruler and just kind of cutting down in there and then decided just to go up and down all around to get my circular shape. This is really easy to do. You can use whatever you want to use, but I had already cut my thumb. I did not want to have to get out a blade or anything else like that. Okay, so once it is popped out of its form there, you're just going to rub off the little edges. They'll be kind of fraying. And then we're going to cover those with a sheet of this faux, it's like a snow fabric or a batting material but I got it a long time ago to use for my little snow village, my little winter village. So this is going to stick pretty well without any glue, so you really wouldn't have to use it. But just for security reasons, I went ahead and opened mine back up, sprayed a little bit, and then glue, put them back down in the same shape. Now be sure that you have windows open, doors open, a fan going, or that you do this outside in a well-ventilated space. Now I'm going to put some on the top of these as well and take some of that snow. You can get it like a white, which is what I have. Or if you prefer, you can get it in like an iridescent. And that's really nice too. I didn't use my salt 
and snowflake mixture this time because I didn't want to have to deal with the, the mess of it. Plus, I don't have to have this in any type of a thickness, so this works best. All right, I'm just sorting through to see what I want to use, and I do have this pick that came off of something, I think, from last year. And then so I've just cut it down and stuck it in the back, and I know that I want my little deer to go right there. So I'm gonna hot glue him on the bottom. It doesn't have shiny surface on the edges, so that's where you wanna put your glue. And it will stick down without coming off. That's my experience anyway. And then another little pine pick I'm putting over here because I want it to look like he is in the woods. Deer like to bed down and, and be in a secure hidden spot, so I'm trying to kind of make him feel comfortable right there in his little home. So these little picks are really nice. I think when we grew up, we called the tree a popcorn tree because the little seed pod would pop open like popcorn pops. So I think that's what these little white pieces are. That's what it reminds me of anyway. But they also kind of put you in the mind of a flower and they're snowy. So I just, I love the texture and the interest that it gives to this piece. And I'm gonna take some of my little snowy pine cones and just put them here and there, just like if you were doing an arrangement you know, like a floral arrangement. Just put them in there and protect your fingers. You can definitely use your little silicone finger protectors for that. Um, I do have an Amazon storefront, so if there's anything in my video that you need to learn about or know about, you can look it up on my Amazon store and it is in my description box. So far, so good. I'm liking my little deer. Don't be concerned with the little holes in his head because we are going to fix that. It's not gonna be a problem. I'm gonna do something really cool with that. And then you're just gonna continue to put them around. I, I pick it up and put it down and, and look to see what I need to go where. And just like when we're doing wreaths and arrangements, pick it up, look at it from all angles and decide what needs to go where. I do that quite a lot. Isn't he cute? If you want to buy me a coffee, do you know that you can certainly do that? The link's in the description box below. Thank you. All right, just add them in here and there. Make sure that you do not go past the edges of your little cap because you're going to have to squeeze the little surface here back into the jar. So you don't want to extend past your edges. Leave everything in the center on the top. Okay, so this, these little berries came off of the little garland, the little pitberry garland, whatever. And you can pull them off the wire and cut them. And I decided to use these to make him look like a little buck. When, when uh, deer or babies, when they get older, obviously, they start to grow little nubs on their head before they become horns. So now we have a little nub and buck. Isn't he cute? After we get done with the little snowman. So I'm gonna take a piece of this wire that I already had um, it came off of a floral pick that I used before, and I'm going to take the skinny wire part and just poke it right into the fabric. We have to have a way to secure this snowman and make sure he doesn't pop off of our little base when we put him together. So I'm just doing the same thing on both sides, putting the wire side down first, trim it down so he's got some little stilts, and then press it straight through the fabric. It's really easy to puncture through that fabric, by the way. No worries about that. Okay, so he's down, and now we need to add some hot glue underneath. And while I have him, because his bottom is so uh, thick and so um, round, I have to put quite a bit of glue and then hold him down there till he's completely dry. Again, with the Pitberry Garland, I'm going to make a little circle with a couple of loops, and we're going to put Put it down over his arms, making sure again that it stays on that base and does not go off of the base. And I'm going to put that down at his feet, and then we're going to make almost like a little wreath circle to go around him. So I'm just going to lay these pine cones one at a time, all in the same direction, all the way around. Just like this. So you can see the little pit berries sticking out underneath. I like them. They look snowy to me. It looks perfect. Just going to go around and around here. Stay tuned because later on we have information about the 8,000 subscriber giveaway. It's coming up. You don't want to miss it. Okay, so we're going to continue around just like this. 
until the circle is complete. You can use anything you want to use here. You can use little iridescent pom-poms to look like snowballs or just anything you want. And so that part is finished. I like it. And I'm going to add two of these little trees. And these are just little white trees that you can get at Dollar Tree or at Target, um, Bullseye's Playground, whatever. And you can just cut them because they're on wire. So you can make, make them smaller if you would like. And I've used a larger one and a smaller one. And then I'm going to twist around just a little dowel rod that I have here to make a little twisty, like snowy branch. I'm going to add some hot glue and tuck that right inside behind the tree. And it's going to stand up right by his little hands or his little arms. Cute. They almost look like a little heart, don't they, on the top. And again, just kind of looking all the way around to see what else I want to add. I'm going to add one more right to the front, right behind the trees and on top of the pine cones. And he is just too precious. It might be a she. Who knows? She's like in her fur coat and her little fur wrap there. Now I'm going to disassemble this because I need two wood discs. So I'm just going to take this apart. And then I'm going to spray paint them with the same paint. Be sure to follow me on my social media. Okay, so now we have to assemble everything with our snow globes. And I'm just trying to get an idea of what pieces I want to go where. And I know that I want the top to actually be the bottom now. So I'm going to start by taking my small jar and the deer, who is smaller, and I'm just going to press it up into the neck or the mouth of that jar. Press it, press it, press it. And I do have one of my branch tips a little bit bent over, but I... I'm not bothered by that one little bit. Everything doesn't grow straight in nature, so who knows how it would have gone if it would have just been plunked down by the wind. So there you go. Very cute. Now we need to cover the top. We don't want that to show. and It's got a dimple in it like the bottom of a jar normally has, and it's kind of ugly. We're going to need to cover that up. Plus, if it's going to be a candle holder, we need a flat surface to put there. So we're going to go around with a little bit of fix-all glue and the hot glue in between. you got to work really quick after you put the hot glue on because it dries fast on glass and on metal. And there you go. This is going to be our top and our bottom, and I think it looks great. Now we're going to take some of this trim. It's kind of fuzzy, sparkly little rope trim. And then I'm going to cut a piece of greenery down. It's just cutting off little pieces so I have something to grab onto with the rope. Just trimming it. Now I have a little stem to attach it. And I can put it right underneath that knot. Put a little bit of hot glue there to make sure nothing comes off. And then I can just tie it in there. I don't want anything to fall apart. Y'all, I swear I don't have ghosts in my house. What you hear above is my kids. Okay, so there we go. I'm tying this down. Very simple. You could hot glue it if you wanted to. And you could certainly use a different type. You could use jute or anything you want on the top. But I thought this would be appropriate for Winter Wonderland because it's sparkly. So now we have one piece of our pick. I'm going to add another one of these little pods. And I'm going to add another little pine cone. Just like that. Isn't he adorable? I love it. All right, now it's time for the snowman. We're going to put him in carefully, making sure you get his arms in there because the mouth of the jar is the smallest diameter. So I'm just tucking as we go along. He fit in nicely. Got plenty of room there. Always check before to make sure that your items are going to fit. So just, you know, check it out first. Now I'm just going to press it in. Screw that lid down nicely. And when you flip it back over, this is how this one looks. You can put extra snow in if you want to, but I did not need it for mine. I like it like this, and the one at Bath & Body Works did not have loose snow in it either. Alright, so I'm taking that plate. It is upside down, and I am placing the bottom of the jar, which is now the top, right on top. Give it time to dry. So I'm trying to support that that plate on there to make sure nothing happens and I'm going to add a wooden disc on the bottom of this one 
well, it will be the bottom now. Just to make sure that both of my items looked, you know, like a pair. I'm going to take the rest of that little piece of rope and go around right in the center, right around where the little crack is between those, and a little bit of glue here and there just to make sure it doesn't move. And instead of tying this off, I'm just going to make it just loop around and that's all. I've got some really pretty, this is like a metallic looking, almost like a ladder that I'm going to add right underneath the plate at the top of this jar because I want to add something else and I need something to adhere the two things together to hold it make it a little more stable so when you glue to glass it can be difficult things like to pop off so I'm going to go all the way around with a little bit of glue so that I don't make a mess glue a little bit onto the plate a little bit onto the jar or the canister and just keep going around just like that now it's going to cut off in a minute, but don't be concerned because I promise you at the end of the video you're going to see the full effect. You'll be able to see it for what it is in the end. Okay, so I'm going to continue around and this is how it looks and you could certainly leave it this way. But I got these icicle garlands at the thrift store and I thought, you know what, what a perfect place to put these. So now, the hot glue on the ribbon will hold these little plastic icicles nicely in place. And you can certainly use Gorilla Glue or whatever type of adhesive that you like. Be sure you subscribe if you're enjoying this video. I would love to have you as part of my YouTube family and my journey to 10,000 subscribers. project is going to be some framed a framed bag we're going to use some wood tint some paper towels a chip brush or whatever type of brush you like to use with your stains or tints I'm going to use a thrifted 12 by 12 frame I'm just going to pop the back out it doesn't have any glass in it this is a Michaels bag and I'm going to be cutting Santa out he's so cute I love this vintage look for this little Santa, his little sweet face. Now I'm going to try to cut off as much as that green as I can. So I'm going to try to get as close to the red as possible because I don't want to have any of that left on there. And this is how it looks. Okay, so you can see the difference. If you put a white paper behind it, you see how much whiter that looks? And then, see there? So I want it I want it to have a white backing instead of having it against cardboard because that'll make it look more dull. I'm going to use my glue stick. You can use any type that you like, any brand, and just go over this entire bag. The bag is like a fabric mesh on the back. It's kind of a strange texture. So once I get it down, I'm going to take my little tool that came from plaid and I'm going to press this all down. Just going to see where the bottom is, flip it over, and cut that off. And then I'm going to fussy cut around Santa one more time to get a nice clean edge so that we have none of that white showing. Its only purpose is to brighten up the background. Now from Dollar Tree, you can get some of these pieces of wallpaper, wallpaper panel, whatever they call it. I'm going to put my backing back there again so I can get an idea of how much I want to use and just using some clips I'm holding it in place while I cut off the excess on the bottom. It doesn't have to be the exact size of the backing because Santa is going to be covering that up. Now on these pages you fold it over and peel the back off. Just that first strip is how I start. Then I try to get my strip right on top of the surface and press it down carefully so that I know that I don't have any crooked lines. Just making sure there's no bubbles. And then you're gonna peel a little bit up from the back, flip it back over. And then I like to use a wooden ruler because it won't cut your, your wallpaper there. 
and just kind of shimmy it back and forth, back and forth, all along that as you slowly peel the back end off and lay the adhesive side down. And it's going to give you a nice smooth finish. Just like that. And then we're going to put Santa right on top of it. I like that Santa has the little wood paneled background. I think that looks really cute. I'm going to use some of my Mod Podge. Thank you, Plaid, for sending me so many goodies. I am an ambassador, so I get to try out all kinds of items from them. I'm going to use my brush and go all the way to the edges and neatly in pretty much one layer. Cover it all up, and then we're going to lay it down, line it up, and press it down. I'm going to hold on to it so it won't slide anywhere. And then just work the bubbles out. And if you have any spots that aren't stuck all the way down, just go back in there, like his mustache and the edge of his coat, and just lay that down. So far, so good. We're going to put Santa aside and let him dry. I'm going to pull the tabs out of the back, and we're going to work on the frame. This is just raw wood, and I'm going to use some of this gray tint, again, from Plaid. It's a folk art product. I love these. These do not smell like stain. They dry very fast. They're like a water base and uh, fairly easy to clean up. Now the darker colors will, will stain, so you have to be careful and protect your surface, which is what I have done here. And then you're just going to go all the way around. Be sure you get the inside of the frame and all those surfaces. And you're going to grab up a wad of paper towels or an old rag and just start rubbing off every bit of the excess on the inside, on the sides, and on the flat surfaces. So after it's dried and Santa is dry, I'm going to put him back down in the frame. I'm going to use some of this tacky glue and just go here and there in like a dotted line. And then I'm going to go in in between those lines with some lines of hot glue. So it'll stick down quickly and then it'll stick down for longer. Just like that. You can just use hot glue if you want to here, however you want to do it. Then I'm just going to use some lightweight wood blocks here just to hold it down to make sure that nothing comes up. I'm going to give it some time to dry. And then once it's all dry, this is how Santa in the frame looks. Now it's time to embellish. So I made this string of beads on a Valentine's product um, project last year in 2020. And I took it off and I'm using it again this year in the Christmas. And I like it. This is a little thrifted bobble. It's like a ornament of some type and it has a hole in the top. I'm going to take a little white piece of pipe cleaner, loop it around my little beaded piece up there, add some hot glue into the hole, and then I'm just going to place those two pieces of pipe cleaner right down in there and it fits perfectly. And to embellish that we're going to use just a little piece of pick that came off of something else. I'm going to cut it into two little pieces and make sort of a garland for the top of it. I'm going to put it right there on that loop and then give it a minute to dry. And I think I want to add a little bow to it. So I'm just using some of this gingham red and white uh, thrifted ribbon that I have. And I'm going to pull this down to make it really tiny. Then I'm going to trim little edges at a slant. put it right there over my greenery. So I wanted to add one more thing on here and had a snowflake left from my light up snowflake swag, which you definitely need to watch that if you haven't seen it yet. And I'm just gonna add it right there and I think it gives a perfect little finish. What do you think about this project? Isn't he sweet? I think it's perfectly vintage and rustic. Thank you. Okay, so to start off, I have four projects. The first one, I'm showing you a bunch of vintage ribbons I have to choose from, and I get these from Goodwill. And here is some more. 
I've got some ornaments of different sizes and shapes and some little jewels and snowflakes, a variety of papers and embellishments, just things that I thought may fit along with a Victorian inspired, um, you know, Christmas theme. So here's some paper too that I have, tissue paper. And then I have this little box that had ornaments in it. Decided to use it. We're gonna need some Jenga blocks. And I'm gonna start off by taking my wood tent. And I'm going to color this entire thing in this dark color. I know that with the Victorian theme, lots of things in their home, they decorated with dark colors. So they would have had at Christmas time more uh, burgundies and maroons and um, dark green jewel tones and dark wood. So I decided that this would be good for what we're going to be doing. After you put this tent on, you just go and wipe it off. And that's what I'm doing here. And then of course you're going to need to let it dry before you do anything else with it. I just put mine in front of a fan until it's completely dry. I also did some little feet and you'll see that in a minute. So here's this beautiful paper. I have used this on another project and I'm just going to go through and cut out the little images that I think would be cute. Go into this paper. I'm going to cut out some images from here too. And then I'm going to take this ornament apart and just save the top part to use in the project because I don't think the font will fit. So here's the little feet and they're almost like little pots. I'm going to use some hot glue and put these on the bottom. This is going to be like a stand-in curio, I think is what we could probably call it. It's almost like a Christmas card that is 3D. I was looking this up and I saw some things on Pinterest, um, some Tim Holtz things and his are amazing. You should go to Pinterest and check those out if you're interested in doing this type of a style. So I'm just going to take some pieces of paper and I've cut them down to the right size. You know, just use your ruler and measure it down and then get your glue stick, put it in there and it'll hold this perfectly and you won't have any mess on your papers. The tissue is thin so be very careful with that and just kind of I'm doing this in fast motion because I always do way too much video, but I'm being very gentle with the tissue paper parts. So I've got the cute little girls in the top and the cute little girl in the bottom, just kind of near each other. And I didn't start off with the, with the theme of having this like a child's kind of project, but I think it kind of turned out that way like a, a children themed little thing. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Okay, again, with cutting down your paper and getting everything, you see how dark that green is? It's just really pretty. I kind of went by the colors also that were in the tissue paper. And um, that's how I helped, you know, kind of get an idea of what I wanted to go there. And I've also used a doily here. This is just a paper doily and I cut it down just a little piece of it. You can use ribbons or pieces of fabric, anything you like. I went ahead and used this pick and just cut it into pieces and I'm gonna add a little like a Christmas tree in there. This is three dimensional, so you want some things that are flat, you want some things that kind of stand out, but I didn't want anything to be wider than the actual box itself, which kind of limits you to what you can put in there. You can also consider little miniature Christmas ornaments. You can do buttons you know, whatever you like. So I'm just going to place these here and there until I get the look that I like. I used to be a scrapbooker, so I really enjoyed that, mixing patterns and, and you know, pictures and just really giving dimension to things. And I do try to include that in my projects that I do as well. I thought that the font was okay for these two um, Christmas signs that I'm adding. And then the little one in the bottom also, you can't really see that one that well. But um, I think that the pictures and the font suit the style. I'm just gonna take this gold eucalyptus pick and just cut it into pieces. And I'll be using the pieces for other parts in the project and uh, later on in the other projects. So I just wanna add to this jewel here. I'm gonna take these, and these are plastic pretty much, and um, put some hot glue on the back and then put them on the back of this little jewel and I am not sure where I got this from. Probably Goodwill, but it could have been something that my daughter had. I don't know. 
Now I think I want to add this one on the outside to give a little more dimension. But first we need to place the jewel down. And then I'm going to add a little more. Got to have a little sparkle when you're doing uh, Victorian type or old fashioned. Uh, I wouldn't call it retro. I, I kind of think of the 50s, 40s and 50s when I think of retro, but old fashioned or Victorian Christmas, I think of these types of things where they use jewels, they use things that they had for their decorations and they use natural greenery and I think my little greenery choices look pretty close to uh, being realistic. So I'm just going to take that piece, fold it up, make it look like it's intended to be that way, put it there. I've chosen this red and gold for the trim. I'm going to put a piece on the top and a piece on the bottom, so I'm just going to cut those down. If they fray too much, you can use a little hot glue and, you know, put those where they will stay. Or a piece of tape on the back will probably do it too, some clear tape. And I'm just going to go right on the edge. And I decided to flip this one upward because I want to do something special on the top. So this little bicycle ornament, look how cute this is. I want to put it on the top. Yes, and I'm pretty sure that this style of bicycle was around in the Victorian era. I know I've seen pictures of things that are similar to this, so I think that it looks really good with this. And it's red, it matches, and we've got the little children that are featured inside the box, so I think this would be cute right on top. So once the glue is dried, I'm going to take some of that gold ribbon and just tie a little bow because we want this to look like a Christmas present or a Christmas wish right on top of the box. So we're just going to make the little simple bow to go on the top and try to get it small so it doesn't look overly out of proportion. And I'm just going to glue it down right here on close to the handlebars. And then I'm going to continue along with some Dollar Tree table scatter. Just like that. All right. This is something that came off of the tree. Um, not the tree, the bicycle. It's a little holly leaves, and I decided to add those back in there. I think they look really good. They're miniature. They're cute. You could do a little gift in there if you wanted. You could add gold if you wanted. Okay, so on to the next one. We're going to use this beautiful little sign that I got from a thrift store. This is a little, I don't know, it's a little wooden piece that I got. It looks like a, a headboard for a bed or something. If you don't have that, you can use a piece of thin wood like the size of a ruler and some of these little clothespins and make your own. There you go. See that? Yes. Okay, so then I'm going to take some of this old ribbon that I have and again with the pick. I have this beautiful little dove. I believe it's a dove. And we're going to have some table scatter as well. I'm going to start off by covering up the bottom where it says tulip soap because the ribbon that I'm going to use is somewhat sheer and I don't want those words to show through there. So I'm just going along the natural border underneath her little, her little muffler, her coat. And just going along the bottom and then after it's dry I'm going to overlay it with two different ribbons. This one is a little sheer. It looks a little more opaque but uh, I assure you that it is fairly sheer. I'm going to wrap it around the bottom. It's going to cover up that whole bottom section and then just like that trim off anything that you need to trim off and then I'm looking at what I want to do with this ribbon because I, I like the imprint or the embossing on the edge of this. So I know I want to use it in the project, but it's too big. So I'm going to put it on my on my mat and use my little rotary cutter and just go right up the middle, cutting it in half. Now when I do that, I still get that border and the sheer part just overlays it, just gives it a little something extra, and I like it. We're going to glue that on, and then for the top, I don't have as much room up there, so I'm just going to cut the rest of the ribbon part off, keep the trim, and we're going to add that metal trim up on the top and it is like a like a metal I, I don't know how to actually explain it but it, it is sort of like a metal so now we have the top now I'm just holding it in the place that I know it's gonna be in the middle 
of my little frame there and then pushing it right back down, standing it up to make sure that it's going to be able to stand on the bottom. To give a little more support, you can use these little jingle blocks or these tower blocks that come from Dollar Tree. And in order to get mine to stand up correctly, I'm just going to stand it up and put the blocks on that way. So I know it's balanced. All right, so we're gonna go to these little fence posts because that's what they look like now and add some greenery. What a beautiful little girl. Isn't that a pretty image? She's so pretty, those little chubby pink cheeks. It's just a beautiful picture. All right, so don't be afraid to cut down your picks and your florals. You can cut them down. It came from the Dollar Tree. You can really stretch your dollar by getting the pieces that you want by just kind of working on them on your own. So there we go. Now I know on the top, I want that little bird to be up there, but she needs something to sit on so she's not just looking strange up there. So we're gonna put her on a nest. Look at that. I love this piece. I should have been protecting my fingers, but I was just trying to be careful. So you be super careful and use your protectors where you need to. Okay, so we're gonna add here and there and here and there. Y'all be sure to check out the links in the description box and go check out everybody's video. These are a great bunch of women. I've known them for a while now. They're super sweet, super talented. And I know that they would love for you to go over there and check them out. And if you're coming from my channel to see them, please tell them that Brandy sent you. And you'll be doing me and the world a big favor. Now I'm going to make a bow with this little metal stuff. I wasn't sure where I was going at first. I didn't know for sure if it would work, but it worked. Where there's a will, there's a way. Just like my goal to get to 10,000 subscribers. If there's a will, there's a way. I'm going to do it, and I'd love for you to be part of it by subscribing to this channel and following the journey. All right, so I'm just twisting this in the middle with some floral wire. Then I'm going to very carefully pull out the middles of those ribbons. It's kind of hard to do because it's super small, but it works. You could always use tweezers or some pliers to help you with that if you needed to, or you could do something on a larger scale, depending on your picture, what you want to put. Something I've noticed about this style of decoration is that they do a lot of 3D on the people themselves. So, you know, like you'll, the little hat will be 3D or it'll be a photograph of a face, but then the body is dimensional. So I thought, well, why don't we do that with her and just give her a bow that stands out in her picture? And I think this worked really well. So I'm just gonna cut one of those little table scatter um, balls in half and then put it right in the center. It's gonna cover up that wire and it's gonna give a little more adornment to her beautiful little bow. Would you have used the metal? Would you have thought to cut down a ribbon like that to just dissect it and use it in different parts? Gotta stretch your imagination a little bit. Look at all those elements and see what would look. you can do it okay everybody has seen these box signs from the Dollar Tree I've got three different sizes I've used them before and I'm gonna use them again talk about saving your money these are so easy to do pop the back out you can peel off or cover up what's on the inside be sure be sure you get every bit of the glue off that you can get off then you're gonna lay it on your fabric allow yourself about an inch over on each piece and then you're just going to start gluing your pieces down. So I'm gonna run a bead of glue, not on the edge, but on the back. And I'm see there, I can't even keep the finger protector on my poor old Bobo finger. And then you're just gonna rub down. If you got a striped piece like this is, the stripped material, then just be sure that you kind of are conscious of your stripes so that you don't have it crooked when you turn it around. And then on the back, you're just gonna fold it like you're wrapping a package. Fold your corner in and then flip it over. 
Just be careful with your little fingers that you don't burn yourself. Okay, so when all your pieces are done, you can put some paper on the back to cover that up if you want, or if you're gonna keep it for yourself, really not that necessary. I've got some wooden joy stickers that I am recycling from another project. I'm gonna use them again. I am not sure where they came from originally, but I got them at dirt cheap. Okay, so I've just taken some red paint. You choose whatever color coordinates with what you're doing. And here we go with joy again know what I say about joy we're gonna color those very pretty and then I'm gonna put them aside and let them dry in the meantime I'm going to reassemble my houses just like so I love this fabric I was trying to choose between this one and then I have one that's a black and white um, ticking mattress ticking but for the rustic look that I'm going for I really think this color looks good. Don't you think this is nice together? This is really nice. And it's the final result is just gorgeous. I cannot, I can't. It's really nice. So here we are with our three little houses. And here are our letters. You can put those in whatever order you want. You can do small to, to large or however you want to do it. Now we're going to take stacks of ribbon. These are all beige, white, and red ribbons that I have. And I'm going to use a different like pattern and different um, style ribbon for each of these houses to embellish them. This is the same bow as we did the first time, but you're doing it with three ribbons instead of one. Now, the main thing you need to know is you've got to really hold that steel and tight around that knot. Otherwise, when you start in pulling it apart like I'm doing here, you'll pull your entire bow apart. So be sure you get it on there tight. Once you do that, you can trim it up or put your edges in the, your uh, end pieces in the front, whichever way you want to do it. Then I'm going to use a different set of ribbon on the next one, but they all coordinate. And then on the next one, an uh, even more different set. But you can see they're all the same, all the same thing. They coordinate nicely. And so there'll be a bow on the top of each little house. Now we're going to go back to that same pick from um, Walmart and I'm going to put two pieces in each box there on the bottom and I'm going to take some more of those berries and cut them up into little pieces so this is easy enough trim down where you need to trim to put your pieces in and have them lay down they're going to try to jump up because they are bulky so they're going to try to pull away just hold them down there for a minute or two until it is set to your glue is set just like that then you're just gonna add your little berries in there. Y'all can use regular stickers. You can use chip wood. You don't even have to use the word joy. You can put little snowmen or the little wood ornaments that are Christmas trees that you get from Dollar Tree. You can put those in there instead. That would be really cute. Just whatever style and whatever your preference is. So we're gonna do the same thing to each and every one of those. So I'm gonna call these three, three projects because they actually are a little different even though they are a set. Now we're gonna put a little bit of the mistletoe in the top cause hey, we all need a little mistletoe hanging from the top of the house, right? Coordinate. Project number one is a yard flag wall hanger. We're gonna use some of these um, pit berries from Dollar Tree. Use any ribbons you like. These came from the thrift store in some type of a kit, I think. And they're just little scraps of ribbon. These are two pieces that I got off of another project. It's just gonna be the tops and bottoms. And then I thrifted this beautiful cardinal rustic looking yard flag. We're gonna use some foam board. You can get yours at the Dollar Tree. Mine was thrifted. And we're going to put it on top of something. You can either use your cutting mat or you can just measure it with a ruler, whichever way you want. And figure out what size you have because we want that foam board to be the backing for this project to make it sturdy. So measure that out, and that's what I'm doing here, just showing you that I'm measuring it out. 
and I'm going to be cutting it on top of my mat. I'm just using my rotary cutter, but you can use whatever you have to do this. I just find this is easier and it makes a cleaner line than using scissors. Sometimes you have to flip it over on the other side and then cut the other side as well. Because the paper, there's paper on the back and the front and, it'll, and there's foam in between, sandwich in between, and sometimes it'll be kind of messy. But you can clean your edges up also. I'm going to use my little glue stick here. And it's back to school time, so you can get a lot of good buys. Right now, Dollar Tree has the Jot. I think it's eight sticks in a pack, so that's a really good deal for your all of your crafting needs. And now I'm going to put down my flag right on top of that. And press it down with my hands to get any wrinkles out. And then I'm going to use my wallpaper smoother. And just smooth that right out. All the way to the edges, because we don't want anything to peel off. And you can go around the edges and reinforce that with some hot glue or any type of glue you have. Now you can see that there's a space that is still bare on the top and the bottom. And that's because I'm going to use something to trim this out. I'm just using regular strength hot glue here. This is going to be in the house. If you're going to put anything like this outside, which I really wouldn't recommend for this type of a project. But if you're going to put it outside maybe on a covered porch, you're probably going to want to use something like uh, Gorilla Glue, something that's stronger and it can deal with um, weather changes without falling apart. Okay, so now I'm just going to add this top and bottom. And really all you need to do, you can use paint sticks, you can use any type of scraps that you have. Just make sure that, you know, for this particular look that it's a longer on the sides than it is um, than the picture is and I'm just going to use my clamps and clamp this down because sometimes the foam boards will bow a little bit and I want to be sure that the glue is sticking down to my trim pieces same thing here and leaving that little space on the back ensures that we have plenty of that picture showing from the flag I don't want to cover up anything that I don't have to Very easy to go back and just fix any little areas that need a little extra love. And now we're going to start on embellishing this. And these pieces of ribbon are about 10 inches long. And all I'm doing is folding them over. So I'm making a loop on the top and squeezing those and holding those in the middle. I'm going to do that with lots of my ribbon. I've just kind of picked through and decided, you know, which ones look like they coordinate nicely and which ones are going to give me that rustic look that I enjoy in my house. And as you know, I have been adding more cottage type feel in my house. So I'm going to try to do that at Christmas time also. So be sure that you subscribe so when we do have Christmas content coming out, you won't miss anything. Now if you don't feel comfortable holding this in your hand, use a clamp and put it together. And you see there's really no pattern um, for this. I'm going to take a zip tie. You can use a zip tie, floor wire, a pipe cleaner, a uh, a twist tie from a bread bag if that's all you have and just tighten this up really tightly in the middle and then I'm going to cut off any excess and fluff out the bow if you are going to go and buy some zip ties to use in crafting it's you really might consider getting ones that the smallest one that you could possibly use to keep your project secure because right there where you see that little white square that's going to cause some bulk and it is really difficult because you can't trim it down it's really difficult to work around that you have to glue it and then you're going to have like a little almost like a little gap it's not a big deal for everything but 
If that kind of stuff bothers you, then you might consider getting smaller zip ties, and you can get a variety of zip ties at the Dollar Tree. Very affordable, and lots and lots and lots of them. I think the smallest ones I've seen are the black ones, but um, correct me if I'm wrong if there's something else that you've seen. Okay, this type of bow is what Ramon at Home refers to as a funky bow. And you pretty much are going to have all your tails poking out in every which way. And you're going to have all of your little loops poking out in every which way. And makes a cute bow. And these are really pretty too if you use them on a larger scale on bigger projects. So we're just going to take that and decide where we want it to be. And then hot glue it in place. When I'm doing my crafting, I generally prefer when I'm adding bows to do it in the left corner. I don't know why. It just always feels right to me to put it over there. And I kind of go by how I feel about a project, you know, what feels right to me. So I do recommend that you do the same. Now I'm just going to take another piece of that. I'm going to make a really simple little bow. Just making a little loop, squishing it down in the middle, and then tying it off. Very, very simple. I'm doing a lot more of these little simple bows lately because I feel like they look better with um, the type of decor that's in my home. You do what, what you like. And I'm just going to add that little kitty right in the middle of that funky bow for a little extra interest. Now we're going to take some of this Pitberry Vine. I'll get it out in a minute. And you've seen me do this before in projects. We're just going to clip it off at whatever length that you like. Just be sure that you get, you know, several of those berries on the vine. And if you want to make a little twist out of this, a little spiral, you just wrap it around a pencil or whatever you have. And just slide it off the end and there you go. And then you can just add a little hot glue. And put those little pieces wherever you like. I feel like this was appropriate for this picture because of the branches in the background and because it's very snowy so it looked like little snow covered branches to me what do you think I think that really made a difference up there so now I'm just going to take some jute that I have and since conveniently enough there are little hangers on this I'm just gonna tie it off and get it to the length that I want it so simple. If you do not have hangers on your little scraps, all you have to do is hot glue it to the back or tie it on whichever way that you like to do it. You could use a staple gun if you've got a good quality thick piece of material. There you have it. In Project gorgeous. number three is going to be a hanging bird nest decor. This is thrifted, a little thrifted piece, a little bird. And then this is something that I got on clearance at Michael's or at, yeah, I think it was Michael's, several years ago. Lots of beautiful scrap in here, scrap paper. And you just go through there and find something that you think you like. And I'm going to be picking two pieces from here. And this came from the Dollar Tree. This dreaming sign. And it reminded me of Christmas trees. So guess what we're going to be making? You got it. I'm going to start off by removing all the paper. Remove it however you have to. Whatever, whatever technique you use, go ahead and use that. Sometimes it'll peel off kind of easily like this, and sometimes you got a big mess. These pieces of galvanized letters, I'm going to tell you, they are very, very fragile. So if you want to keep those, you're going to have to be very delicate with them because they will snap right off. Do you see what happened there? It's still hanging by a thread, but barely. I'm just going to go in there and just work around those letters. I should have got a close-up of this. I don't know what it is, but I really enjoyed myself taking these letters off. Who doesn't love a makeover, right? I mean, whether it's projects or houses or clothing or whatever. It's always fun to see how you can take one thing and turn it completely into something else. Right out of your mind, whatever idea you have, into something else. So 
So I'm choosing two pieces of paper that I like. And I think this one's pretty. And this one with the tree is very pretty. It's very vintage looking to me. Then I'm just going to hold it down and then press around on my edges so I can find the outline of where we need to be cutting. This is not nearly as complicated as I'm sure that I will make it. So just watch what I'm doing. I creased it with my fingers and now I'm just going to crease it with that metal uh, ruler. And then folding it over so I can see where my edge is. And then I'm going to go right down where this crease is and rub that with a ruler. Because it's kind of hard to crease it without cutting it because there's a gap between the two triangles. But you can definitely get a crease in it right there. So I'm just going to follow that crease line all the way down to cut that triangle out. And that's what you're seeing me do here. See right there? There you go. But you certainly don't have to do it that way because it's going to be covered up. I just made it very complicated. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with this other side. I wanted to leave this in rather than editing it out so that you could see again that all you have to do is just crease it. You can't see it on the camera, but I could see it. You know, you can see it when you're doing it in person. You can you can tell where you put your little lines. You can use scissors, you can use a blade, you can glue this on first and then cut it off with an exacto knife, which probably would have been the easiest way to do it. Um, whichever way that you want to do it. Make it easier on yourself. It doesn't have to be as difficult as I made it look. Okay, here we go with the glue stick again. I'm just coating this down with glue. And then I'm going to add my pieces of paper back on it. I love the purple glue stick. Okay, no more glue stick talk. I've said enough. Then you're going to put that down and put your other piece down. And you can see here I went back and trimmed off that extra. Then you're just going to take your knife and go back and cut off the excess. See what I mean? And this is how it looks when you flip it over. Nice and pretty. I'm going to take my sanding block and just go down those edges and clean that up. This is going to press it down. And it is also going to take off any edges that I didn't uh, cleanly cut. And it's also going to give it like a white or a worn look on the edges, which I like in my projects. I found that doing this makes it look like you bought it this way. And it's, I mean, we're trying to create high end looks, so it kind of goes along with the idea. So now we have two little Christmas trees. What do you think about that? I'm going to take a screwdriver and this piece of wood and just split it right down the middle. It already had a split in it. These pieces of wood came from the Dollar Tree in a little bag. It's over where the sand and the little rocks are. If you can find them at your Dollar Tree. These will be our tree trunks. Ideally, you want to put them where the tree trunk would be on a tree. We're going to work on our little birdie here. I'm just cutting the hanger off because apparently he was an ornament. Excuse my sniffles. It's allergy season here. Okay, and I'm going to... It looks like somebody just made this, really. It was kind of dirty looking and... Yeah, I'm just going to take it off. And I was very happy that it pretty much came straight off. Didn't leave any residue on my little metal bird or anything. I'm going to clean up, just get the little fuzz off of his hat, and decide how I want his little hat to look. 
and he's going to be very happy living in those trees. Next, we're going to make him a nest. He's found his home, now it's time to settle in. So I'm just going to loop over this vine, and you can see that it's going to make a little nest for him. And the little berries on it make it look like snow, which is appropriate for the winter time, I believe. I've just twisted it in the middle, and then we're going to add a little bit of greenery to that. Just on one side, like he's sitting on a branch. He's going to add my hot glue, and to keep it from pulling up, I'm going to clamp it down. And then I'm going to snip the ends of these vines. They're twisted in the middle, so they're safely secured in there. Add another piece if you need to to hold it together. But then I'm going to rough it up and clip them apart. I lost a branch. Now it looks more like sticks. So, once the glue is dried, I'm going to add my nest in there. Oh, how cute is this going to be? So cute. I'm going to add some hot glue on the branch. Tuck that little nest right in there. Make it pretty for our little bird. Then I'm going to add a bit of glue there because he's metal and sometimes metal doesn't want to stick to the glue so I'm hoping it will go through some of those little openings there. I'm going to add a dot of hot glue and press the tail of the hat down so that it's folded over. I like that look better than sticking straight up. You can find little bird ornaments everywhere in the winter time. Hopefully you can thrift some early, and hopefully your Dollar Tree will have something that you can use instead. You can definitely use a bird without a hat, and you can get those any time in the summer, pretty much anywhere. Now I've trimmed down my little pieces of tree stumps or tree trunks. I'm going to add some strong Gorilla Glue. Put that on the bottom. So there's one trunk for one tree, and then here's the trunk for the other tree. Gonna add some hot glue and press that in place to make sure that it sits still. And you could see me sliding it over to make sure that it was centered, just like that. Then I'm gonna make another one of those little bows. You should be a pro at these bows now at the end of this video, as we've made several. I think we've made one for every project. We have, haven't we? We've just done it in different ways. Tied in the middle with a little piece of jute or smaller ribbon or the same ribbon if you want to. Whichever way you like it. Trim that off of there. And then we're going to make little tree toppers. So this is the same ribbon that I got from um, that thrifted pack. All this came together and I just went through and decided which ones look the best for each little tree. So I'm adding one bow to the top of each tree. The little birdie decorated his tree, his little tree house. I love the idea of birds and cardinals at Christmas time, especially if you've heard of the story of the cardinal and that when you see one, that means that it's the spirit of a loved one coming back to visit. And after last year being so terrible and there was so much loss, I think this is the perfect way to remember those who are not with us this Christmas. You could always use a bead on the top or a star or 
You could even use a sticker if you wanted to. You could use a pine cone, you could use some more greenery, anything that you want on the top. Or if you get your papers all the way to the top, maybe you have larger paper and it covered the entire thing. You don't have to put anything on there at all. But I thought this was really cute. Now we have the original hanger. Okay, so this is plaster chalk paint, white chalk paint. Use whatever kind of paint you like. I have got some folk art brushed metal, and it's like a brushed silver, I believe, and then some Martha Stewart glittery. Glittery paint, I would say, but it's more like a glitter glue. You could probably use that too. Some Let It Snow from Dollar Tree, some Skates from Dollar Tree, and then also these little hanging chalkboard signs came from Dollar Tree and they come in two different sizes so you just choose what you like I have a little cotton cording also you're gonna start by taking off all of your jute remove all those hangers easy enough now you see here some of these are not finished very well and they're splintery we don't want that you want this to be high-end and you're gonna get your sanding paper or your sanding block and just go over all those wooden pieces on the tops there Smooth them down so you don't hurt yourself. Now see, if you don't have a special tool, you can pull these pieces off the skate. I just showed you what will happen if you just pull it off. You may have some splintering, but you're not gonna see it, so it's not a problem. However, if you have a tool like I do, go ahead and use something thin like this. Slide it under and just slide it around under there before you pry it up, and that'll kind of break the glue seal. Same thing here with this tie. The snowflake is so thin, it would absolutely break if you try to do it with your fingers. But you can do it just like that if you slide something thin under there. So sand off anything that needs to be sanded on the skates. There's a little rough spots where the glue was that held those snowflakes down. Wipe it off and then go ahead and begin painting. Now, I chose these colors because I like a rustic look. I feel like I really want these to fit into my particular home, but you can do these any way you like. I like the idea of having a creamy white and then a bright white together. So that's why I did mine this way. Just get whatever brush you like to use and just get in there. Leave that row out where the, um, the grommet spots are or where the eyes are that you put your laces in. Just leave that part out and <laughs> I was dancing and listening to Christmas music and uh, go ahead and finish the rest and let it dry and then I'm just taking that white and putting it over the snowflake here I'm just almost like a dry brush I guess I'm trying to like wipe some off and then rub it on there because I don't want it to be so stark you know I want it to kind of blend in a little better I'm taking that brush metal and going over the blade part of the skates this is gonna be underneath the boot itself, or the shoe, this, the top part, and then just make all of that, that silver color. Now you can use gray, you can use whatever you want. You could also use acrylic paint markers, you could use regular markers, use what you have. I'm gonna use that same paint and do the other skate, and then I'm gonna go over the wording of Let It Snow. It's thin, It's even with shaking it up, it's kinda of thin, so you can almost see underneath it. I'm going to take my cherry colored furniture repair marker from Dollar Tree and I'm going to use it as a stain for these pieces. These are all going to blend in nicely together and I think this makes it have a richer look, a more finished look I guess. You're going to go over the top and all the pieces that you can see. We're not worried about the back, that's not going to be seen. So here we go, this is what it looks like. And I'm going to use this same color to go around the bottom of the shoe which is usually like a I don't know a leather so I'm gonna go ahead and do it like that going back over with that bright white that I have and go right over where the shoe would lace up or the boot would lace up I'm trying not to get into that line that's beside there that's kind of lasered or cut into there because I want this to 
to show. I want to leave it there so that it gives it more dimension. Just like that. You can use a toothpick while your paint's wet and clean that out. Now we're going to cover the top of the boot or the skate with a little bit of the fur that we used on our wreath. Very easy to do. So you're just going to lay it there and trim it down. Nothing precise here. Got to have that coffee while you're working, right? Put some hot glue on there. And you could probably use a spray adhesive also for this. I just have my hot glue handy and I like to use it because it's there. And same thing on the other one. And this is going to give a little furry top. And I like the way it looks. I think it looks cozy. Okay, so once that is flat, we're going to, and I'm making sure that it's nice and dry here and cool. Just kind of looking at it to make sure that when I fold it over, I don't have a lot of bulk in the middle and that it just kind of meets itself. And it does. So pretty good for eyeballing, right? Some more hot glue is going to be put right along the top and the bottom and you can fill on the inside if you would like. Kind of roll it down, press it down and it'll give you a nice little smooth edge there. Same thing with this. And be sure if you've used uh, any type of a stain that you wash your hands before handling light colored stuff because the stain will transfer right over onto your light fabrics. So just, just know you need to do that. I do have white paint on my fingers, but it's dried and this is white so we're good. Alright, now I'm just kind of feeling for the edge and I'm going to go right outside the edge and just trim it down a little bit because it's a little too much and I don't want it to look ridiculously sized against the skate when we put it back on. So I'm just, it was naturally curved, so I'm just curving it. And then you can just kind of brush over that fluff with your fingers and it'll fluff it right up and look how cute. Okay, so I'm going to take some of that glittery paint and I'm going to just kind of, if you brush it, it's going to be very barely noticeable. So I did actually change the technique when I started doing these snowflakes and just kind of dabbed it up and down and brushed it back and forth. It seemed to lay more paint on that way. You can see here I'm dabbing it and more of the glitter actually shows. It's very slight. Okay, so once these are dry, I'm gonna go back in with a silver acrylic pen and I'm gonna go back over those circles where you would lace up the skate. Skate, boot, shoe, I have said all kinds of footwear. It's actually a skate. Let it dry so you don't smear anything on both of them. And look how pretty that looks. It's pretty. Now we get to put our little fuzzy top back on. It does curve downward, so be sure that you put it back on correctly. Just like that. And that, oh my goodness, I love this. I love this. A little bit of hot glue, and you can put that fuzzy little piece right back on there. What do you think? Do you like these? Which one do you think you like the best so far? I mean, I know you haven't seen the entire thing here, but do you have a favorite yet? Okay, so now we're gonna add the snowflakes back down on both of them. Y'all, we are almost to 10,000. I set a goal for myself to have 10,000 subscribers by 2022, and we are almost there. Just a few hundred left. I'm so excited. Are y'all excited? I'm so excited. All right, I'm going to take some of that white cord, and I'm just going to go where it's mainly behind the little flag piece here. You're going to go in on one side, pull it back, and then push it back up into the other side. You do that on each one of these, and that is going to form our little banner or bunting or whatever you want to call this or garland yeah so you can see how it will look and then we're gonna start putting our pieces down and then we'll add a little something extra so once you get it where you want it a little tip for you is hold it in place and just pivot it up I'm gonna put this where it's on the top here so there's some shading behind it you can see some shadow behind it and it gives it uh, I think a little more depth I'm going to go right underneath the blade here, add just a little, and the best thing about these little things, that hot glue wipes right off. Look at that. 
it comes right off. It's not a chalkboard texture. It's, it's a little bit different. Uh, if you've got these, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's kind of hard to explain it. It just looks like a chalkboard. And then same thing here to make sure that my things stay in the same place. Now, I went and got this little, this came off of a sign that I did last year. It's a snowflake that's metal and it's actually an ornament. I want to put it in the middle and I want it to be raised up so I used a scrap of wood. And now I'm going to take uh, a little hot glue and put it down. I made a little wreath with the Pitberry garland that is white. And that was actually in the Christmas or the fall, I think. And I'm going to just add some hot glue. I laid it down first so that I don't make a huge mess. I can just put the glue exactly where I need it to make it stay down. And then I'm going to use some of my clamps from Dollar Tree and just let it sit there until I feel like it's had enough time to dry. And you can see when I'm pulling on it, it's definitely there. Now I'm going to add my little Let It Snow. You could color this white if you want it to stand out more. I loved it just the way it is, so I'm going to leave it that way. But do whatever you think you need to. You know, paint's easy. You just add more. Just paint over it. Now I want to add some mini wreaths to go right in between as spacers. So I'm going to do the same thing on a smaller scale and just wrap that pit berry around itself. So easy, just like that. I'm going to use the same white cord and just take a few scraps of it and just tie a double knot to hold it down. And then you can just trim that off whenever you get done. And I cut mine way down. You can make a bow here if you wanted to, um, you know, whatever you want to do but I didn't want to um, to do that so I just cut it off right above the knot do that on both sides and then this is how we're gonna hang it do you see here I'm making a loop and I'm going to take that loop and tie it pull it through so now we have a little loop to hang it with you can trim off your extras if you would like you can do that on both sides measure where you want to hang it first so you know for sure what you need We're going to start off with some frosty snowy picks and these are some that I got on clearance last year. These are some Dollar Tree poinsettias and then I have one of these garland pieces or swag pieces and then some ribbon and some burlap strips and you're gonna make sure when you get this um, mine came from a thrift store but you can use you know whatever you have repurpose something that you're not using anymore you know pull that old stuff off and just go with it I'm flipping it over to make sure everything's flat on the bottom and then flipping well pushing out all of the little pieces kind of to the side here trying to make it balanced so there's the same amount on both sides I'm going to use this sign from the thrift store to make a base so that this can be easily removed from the table when it's time to eat I'm going to use some tinsel green is good I didn't have any solid green so I got this well these tinsel looking pipe cleaners I should say and I'm going to just glue these down here and that's how we're going to attach it to the wreath so nothing falls apart so after the glue has set up bend those little ends upward put it on the table flip this over put the bottom of your swag piece down on top of your pipe cleaners and you can just feed those through there um, you can see me poking those through there it's easy to do. I started in the middle, but you can start on the end if you would like and then work your way down to the other end. Whatever works best for you. So now it's attached. We're going to leave those little pipe cleaners sticking out because we're going to add our picks right to those. I'm going to put them where I want this centerpiece to be balanced on both sides. So I'm trying to make sure that everything is sort of symmetrical on the sides. I do have two more picks that I'm going to add in just a moment and you'll see that so that these picks are going to make kind of an X in the middle and I hope this view is okay for you I think you can see everything really well this way you can see it and um, tell what I'm doing and I'm just twisting those in with the same pipe cleaners I already had 
All right, so I'm going to loosen this one up, add another one across here, and then another one across here. So now we have an X, and both sides will look exactly the same. They all fit down in that pipe cleaner. Be sure you use the full length. Pipe cleaners do not cut them in half, or you will not have enough for this. You could always use something else to attach them down if you'd like. I have some of this burlap ribbon that I am going to cut into four 12 inch pieces. It is wired and that is helpful to know um, because it's going to help us for what we're going to do with it. I'm going to take this, now the top one, that white one came from Hobby Lobby. I got it 50% off in the clearance section and then I got um, that bottom piece that right there that came from Dollar Tree and you can get that pretty much all year round I believe and then we're just gonna stack them and you can put whichever color you want on top you don't have to use the burlap but since I like rustic in my house I want to keep that theme so that everything coordinates from my tree you know to the centerpiece to the wreaths um, any little decor pieces that I have we're gonna Start by attaching it just with the branches. You just twist your little greenery branches that are under there, and you just pinch your your ribbons and then twist it into that. You see how that works? And then pull those apart so you can get both colors where you can see them, the white and the beige. And then we're gonna go to the other side, wind it in the branches, like that and then loop it over onto the other side so if you would like to use a what would that be 12 12 12 and 12 48 inches so two feet of ribbon if you wanted to um no, four feet I think it would be four feet you know what I mean if you want to use one length of ribbon instead of cutting it into four parts is what I am saying you can certainly do it that way but um I wanted to do it this way because I save a little bit of ribbon and I'm almost out of that white okay yeah were y'all shocked when I said I got it from Hobby Lobby mm-hmm yeah but I couldn't I haven't been able to find any white like that so and I really wanted it so it was worth it at 50% off and the rolls are usually pretty good size so I'm gonna continue down all the way to the end now the two tips of these the outer ends of these are kind of sparse like those trees that you get at Dollar Tree have that one long branch on the end I just folded it back uh, underneath to get rid of that little silly looking sad piece and now this one is going to be twisted here on the end okay now we're going to take these poinsettias from Dollar Tree and they look a little sad you can double them up which is what I will do here shortly and show you how to do that um, just to give it a little more impact. Otherwise, it kind of gets lost in the rest of the greenery, right? You know what I mean? So we're going to fix it so that it, it gets a little more attention. And it almost looks like one flower if you kind of interlace those little petals. You can do it however you want. And you don't have to use white. If you're going to use a different color theme, just use different colors. Now, I had some of this frosted fern left from last year, and I think it came from Dollar Tree, pretty sure that it did. And I thought, you know, this would be a good transition between that evergreen background and the snowy top to put this in here. It's sort of iridescent, it's frosty looking, and it really is pretty. I mean, on its own, it might not look too great, but when you cut it into pieces and then use it as a filler, it looks really nice. What do you think? Do you like that? I think it looks good there. Now, I intentionally left my center open because that's where we're going to put our candles. But this is what we have so far. Okay, so I have a couple little pieces of those ferns left because I'm going to need to use those in just a second. Now, the X on the bottom is going to give us somewhat of a base to put our candles on. They're flameless candles, and that is definitely what you want to use. Safety first. Yeah. I don't want to use regular candles with hurricanes over the top, although you could. But this centerpiece is kind of a quick one to make. It's time for new candles, y'all. So you can see, you just kind of balance them on there. And this is how it looks when it's lit up. And then you can see those little extra 
gaps there, just go ahead and use the extra pieces and of greenery and just tuck in there and no one will even know. Moving on to the next project, we're going to work on this beautiful yardstick swag. I won't be using a yardstick though, you'll see what I use. So I'm going to use some long deco mesh, some shorter deco mesh. I'm going to use white and red. I'm going to be using, I don't use that silver that's to the side. I've got some bottle brush trees from Dollar Tree. I've got some Dollar General, Dollar Tree, and thrifted ribbon. I've got some of these little ornaments that all came from Goodwill. Aren't they sweet? And then this one. And here's a Santa that I got at the thrift store, but you can get them similar. I think he has glasses at Dollar Tree. And then here's the little pick. This is a stake that came off of some type of a yard stake that I had. It is about 24 inches long, 20, 24 inches, something like that. And we're gonna use some pipe cleaners. And this is how we're gonna attach our deco mesh to the stick. So you're just going to wrap one around the top, it's about an inch down, tightly, and then a little dot of hot glue so it doesn't slip on you. Then we're going to go down four or five inches, depending on what you want to do, and we're going to wrap one to each side. So wrap it in the middle and press one off to the side. And we're going to do the same thing right over the top or right under or above it and go right to the side. We're going to go down the same amount of distance, one in the middle, a little bit of glue to hold these down. If you'd like to buy me a coffee, you certainly can to show me some love. The link is in the description box below. We're going to continue all the way down just like this until we get to the bottom and on the bottom we're going to do two pieces and then you'll be a little space there. Be sure that you get your hot glue on the bottom one for certain or it will fall off when you try to make your loop on the end. And you'll see what I mean when I start adding on my deco mesh. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. I'm gonna take all the little hangers off of my ornaments also. Should have mentioned that earlier, but there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this very wide deco mesh. I think it's a 20 inch. I'm just going to kind of gather it into my hand. This is a scrap that I got from the thrift store and it is, um, I knew that it wouldn't be enough to do too much with, but it's perfect for these swags. Good for scraps. I'm just going to place it down and wrap it around. Just like that. I'm going to go down, make a little poof, kind of tucking my edges under. See the little poof there? We're going to take a little ruler until you can learn how to eyeball this. And we're going to do 10 inch poofs. So there we go. It's going to go to the outside. Just going to push it down into the center and then twist it. You can use your finger or your knuckles or whatever to hold it in place. Because deco mesh can kind of be frustrating and unruly, especially when you use the big spools like this. It gets kind of crazy and it catches on all of the pipe cleaners and drags across your table. It's just potentially a big mess. Going down another 10 inches and we're going to go back to the center. Poof it up, put it in the center. Okay, we're going to go to the side again. We're going to work all on one side and then after we go to the bottom, We'll loop back up and start on the other side. So there we are in the middle and then back to the outside. 
All right, the bottom, same thing, 10 inch poof, but you're just gonna loop it around and put it right in the one on the other side. 10 inch poof to the center. It's gonna overlap the other one you have there. Give lots of volume. 10 inch loop on the side. Make another one. There we go, all the way around until you get back where you started from. I'm just kind of adjusting here. I tucked my tail up too much. It gets really wound tightly when it gets next to the spool. So I'm just showing you how I pull that out. Kind of fluff it around and make sure that it's tucked in. And then wrap it around right there. Okay, so now we're gonna add the red. And this is our Dollar Tree mesh. I think it's eight inches, maybe eight inches. All right, gonna tuck that inside toward the middle, just like we did with the white one, so that it's not sticking up on the outside. It'll all be hidden under the little poofs. And we're gonna do the same process here. We're gonna take about 10 inches. We're gonna start on the side, whichever side you want. This time I'm starting on the right. Before I did the left, it makes no difference one way or the other. Make your poof, find your center point, which is what I'm doing now. And it gets difficult once it starts getting kind of, um, fluffy here it gets kind of uh, challenging but you just keep going you can find them if you if it would help you to use a different color like the red and white pipe cleaner so that you can find it easily go ahead and do it that way whatever works for you because you won't see those pipe cleaners in the end so I'm gonna keep going around same process go to the side go over to the center go back to the side go over to the center until you are at the bottom wherein you will make a loop just like we did before. I didn't want to edit this all out because I feel like some people need a little more visual. So that's what I'm giving you here. So we're looping it across the bottom just like we did before and going into the other side. Just like that. Continue along. And it makes a beautiful, slightly crisscross pattern. Um, it's not as noticeable once you get all of your little elements onto here, but I think it's a pretty look. We're back at the top, and it took almost one whole roll of the Dollar Tree Dicka Mesh. You can change your mesh colors depending on what you have, depending on what kind of decorations you want to put on it. But I really like the idea of using that bluish green color and red and white for my vintage uh, projects and I'm just fluffing it out moving that around where I want it now we're gonna take this beautiful ribbon which was the inspiration for the projects and the coloring and we're gonna do 10 inch pieces we're gonna do nine of the Santa's and dovetail them we're gonna do nine of the Dollar Tree ribbon and dovetail them and then I have a red one that I got too from the thrift store and dovetail those we're going to last minute I decided to use this because I hadn't used it yet I'm cutting these into 10 inch pieces and rolling them up you can see the little pink clip that's where I just rolled it up like a little burrito and clamped it off over there and they'll go on top of our little bundles so let's start our ribbon bundles now I'm gonna use my widest on the bottom then the next one and then right over the top I'm gonna use my beautiful Santa ribbon I'm going to take one of these little rolls and put it right in the center and then I'm going to bunch these toward the center. I'm going to pinch them and press them toward the center. And there we have our ribbon bundle. And starting in the top, I'm going right up here to those pipe cleaners and wrap it around. Very pretty. Now, I use 10 inch pieces. You are certainly welcome to use 12 inch pieces of ribbon strips if you would like. They will stand out more because these, um, because they're 10 inches, they will kind of fall down into the, the arrangement itself. They will kind of be pushed in. You can still definitely see them. You'll see that in the end. Um, you can definitely see them. But if you like more of your ribbon to show, do a couple of more inches on each little strip, and you'll get a bigger punch of your ribbons. So you can see here, I'm pressing it down. And don't worry about 
smash in your loops and all of that because every bit of this is wired ribbon and it can be pulled right back up and deco mesh is very forgiving you can push that around and tuck it under you you really have a lot of um leeway with that back to the center you can see here we're gonna cross them over add that little roll straight onto the top i couldn't think of a thing in the world to make with that little snowy looking red stuff have y'all used it have you used any of that I think it looks great in a ribbon bundle like this but I really don't know what else I would use it for so I did use um, all of it in this project so that's good I didn't waste any money and that always makes me feel better at the end of a project so we're going to continue along until they're all done and then this is what it will look like when you get all of your bundles in and then you just want to be sure that you go up and fluff all of those out. Make sure that none of your corners are folded over or squished. So that's what I'm doing here. Just moving them all out. Moving my little rolls around. And then tuck down all of your little pipe cleaners. Press them back down into the frame like I'm doing here. Or you can cut them off. Whichever one you prefer to do. I found it's easier just to leave them there and tuck them in the back in case I want to go back, you know, as an afterthought and add something to it. I still have it there. Those look so nice and the colors are so pretty together. And there you go. You just flip things out, press them under. Pretty easy to do. Okay, so I have widened up the view a bit so you can see it a little bit better. And we're going to start by adding our little ornaments. I'm going to put Santa at the top and off to the side. I'm going to add my little trees in here. I do pull the bottoms off of those trees before I glue them down. I've cut a little hole in the back of Santa's hat behind the seam and put a pipe cleaner through it so that I can attach him to this piece. I'm going to put some hot glue on the little trees and just tuck those in here and there. You can use whatever type of ornaments you have, but I tried to find things that were vintage looking so that they would fit into the total aesthetic of this piece. And these are a little faded in spots. They're scratched in spots. Um, they are glass. And I just, I thought they were pretty. I love the shape of them in this arrangement. What do you think? It's not your typical round ornaments, so I like that they're different. And they almost look like the little bulbs for the Christmas lights, which is nice. Also a vintage thing, the little shapes of the lights like that. So I'm just poking them here and there. I didn't have very many of them, and I'm just trying to make sure that I have them kind of spaced out there where they should be, where you can see them well. I'm going to add my little boots in here. Just a little bit on the bottom, a little on the side. I do all of my wreaths and my swags laying down. A lot of people use a stand to hold them up. I just don't have one at this point, and that's why I don't do mine standing up. But, but when I do find one, because I'm going to get it thrifted, uh, of course, if I find one, then I'll start doing my videos for you where you can see me put them on standing up. That may be more helpful. Now, this beautiful ribbon, this is the only piece I had. I got it at the thrift store. Uh, loved it, so I decided I'm going to cut it in half to really stretch it. So I'm just going to roll it over in four inch pieces, like a four inch flip flop over there, and then I'm going to have two pieces on each side, and I'm going to pinch it in the middle. This is not going to be the kind of bow that requires a lot of wire to hold it. It's going to be fine with one piece of wire down one side. And you'll see that when I get to the, uh, the end of the bow. It looks just fine. It works just fine. And if it wouldn't have worked when I tried to fluff it out, I would have just gone back and tried something else. Because I didn't use any glue on the bow, I could do that. I'm going to do this with the red. And unfortunately, my Santa did not have very much, so I had to work with just a tiny piece, and I had to use a different bow on the top. The next time, I'll buy two rolls when I find a ribbon I really like. So this is all I had, so I'm just going to make a different type of bow 
just so I can use it in this project because I really, really enjoy looking at this ribbon. It's so cheery and bright and vintage. So I'm adding that on top and you can mix your bows too. I'm going to cut off what we don't need and um, start fluffing. And I'll start fluffing on the bottom and pull those sections out just on the bottom first and then I work my way upward. So that's enough. You know, that will stand out there on its own with just the two pieces of wire and, and I'm glad of that. It worked out. You never know. Crafting is experiment, partly. You just don't always know. I'm going to dovetail the ends off the Santa ribbon there. And you can make a bigger bow. If you have more ribbon, you can make a bigger bow to go on your swag, whatever you choose to do. But I like this one. I think it's cute. Now we're going to use the other half of that ribbon as a tail. So we're going to dovetail it, and I'm going to cut a piece of that red also. It's going to be shorter, and I'm going to dovetail that. Pipe cleaner in the middle is going to hold it together. And then I'm going to add some glue on the back of the bow. And I want to leave my pipe cleaners out because that's how we're going to put it on the, the wreath. I'm going to work down into a spot where I want it to be and then add that bow. Then I'm going to take the tails and kind of pull them over like they have a, just kind of giving them a little life, a little movement. Um, like they're going in and out of the fabric that's here. And I like that. I think that's cute. Gives a little interest. You could do that with your bow tails. Fix it however you like. Santa's beard is totally unruly. Then we're going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to kind of let the red ribbon do its thing over there. And then we're going to add this little mouse right to the top. Little sweet mouse. whatever you want to call them cheese and cracker boards but they're in pathetic shape especially this one and man the turnabout is wonderful on these especially that really crusty one I'm gonna take my power saw but you can use a rough grit sanding block if you would like take them outside give them a good old because I like rustic so the little cutting marks and the little chop marks are completely fine for me I already see it on that cloth so once it's all wiped down, going to protect your surface and we're going to start working on these to give them a better coloring. And look at this. This is antique wax, y'all. The Waverly Antique Wax. Look what it did. Beautiful. So I'll show you here on the back exactly what I did. I'm just going to take a brush and just start smearing it on there. It's thick. Um, it's a thick texture. So just get it on the board really well and I'm just smearing it all around there not trying to make it look pretty and my brush is falling apart but uh yeah not worried about that just getting it on there is the main thing and then we're going to be wiping it off so i've got some fresh paper towels but you can use um, cheesecloth you can use an old rag an old t-shirt i understand works really well for this and we're just going to start rubbing in circles and rubbing around and around covering all of our surfaces and just really rubbing it into the wood can you believe that was underneath the nastiness on that board. I picked the board up because of the shape, but man, I am super thrilled with this. Look at that. Yeah, this one is a stunner. Love it. Don't pass these up when you're at the thrift store. Be sure you get around all your edges with your wags and the little hole up there. I'm not going to make a hanger for mine. I'll leave that open to you, but you know. So I'm just taking this branch that I have had for several years and usually have on my mantle. And I'm going to just fold this over and let it appear as though it is hanging down. 
I have two little star cookie cutters, which also have been in my Christmas things for many years. I'm gonna use them again and give them some new life. I'm gonna take a piece of this jute and just cut it. And then we're gonna tie these together, layered just like this. I think it gives a, a nice look. And if you gave it as a gift, someone could certainly remove that and use it to make their own cookies. Just gonna give it a little knot down there to hold them together. And then we'll tie it to the stem because I don't wanna put any staples or glue on this board. And I don't know that glue would work very well anyway because it is waxed. I'm just kind of tucking this cord around it twisting it back to the front and then tying it. You can certainly make a bow. You can put a ribbon here. You can put some berries on the top, whichever way you want to do it. But I like the simplicity of the piece just like this. Now one more piece under here to keep it from slipping because I'm, I'm not going to be gluing that stem and it can slip off those rounded edges. I'm just going to tuck a piece of this jute around here and tie it off in the back just in a double knot and then trim it down and if you tuck it nicely into the branches you will barely notice it sorry i'm out of the camera angle there but you see it'll stay there nicely wow what a difference from the way that this sad board looked in the very beginning it looked like it had bleach on it or some type of an acid it was awful and now it's beautiful and rustic. Okay, so now we're gonna use this antique looking piece of foam. Any type of ribbon or trim that you have, and you can use pom-poms, you can use little beads, you can use miniature pom-poms, you can use anything you want. I want you to make this your own, but I'm gonna show you what I did. I'm gonna cut this cone in half, and I'm just using my metal ruler to do that. And to get it nice and even on the bottom, I'm just rubbing that across that sand and block. And it, now I have a flat bottom. I have some old ribbons that I can choose from. I just wanted to show you my little collection here of ribbons that I've thrifted. And then this little piece of trim here that's lace. And then I have a beige piece. And this is the one I do end up using. Love it. I had just enough to. We're going to use masking tape because hot glue and foam don't usually work good together. The styrofoam, it kind of melts it and um, you can hurt yourself. So we're just gonna use this masking tape or whatever type of tape. You could use duct tape if you have it. It does not have to be pretty. You can see here it's wrinkled and messy and leaving lumps and bumps all over here. You're not gonna see it, it doesn't matter. The point of this is just to give you some protection. That's a little buffer between your styrofoam and the glue that you're gonna be putting on here. I do like the fact that it's a creamy color and the color of the trim that I have is also pretty much the same color so you, if you see through it you won't see anything okay so I just kind of made a point with a little ball on the top and then wrapped around it and then we're going to start at the bottom wrapping this trim around this little piece and as you can tell this is going to be a Christmas tree so you can see what we're doing here just a little line of glue I don't want the bottom of the trim to hang way over, but I do want it to go over just a little bit because I think that this piece of trim looks a little bit like, I don't know, like it would be on a pine tree, right? Like boughs or branches. I don't know. It just, it kind of felt that way to me. So we're going to just keep going around. I'm going to go up about mm, half inch up above the row underneath put just a little bit of glue at a time and then wrap it and then a little bit 
of glue and then wrap it otherwise you're going to have hot glue that's going to expose you to being burned possibly and then you also run the risk of the glue drying before you get your ribbon on there or running it through there and making a mess accidentally you know just a little bit of time let's take our time with this just like I'm taking my time with this video not a lot of fast motion going on here we wanted to slow it down a little bit for the second half. So you're just going to continue around like this all the way up until you're almost at the top. No need to make a peak unless you just want to fill it all the way up to the top because I'm going to be putting a topper on my tree and you won't be able to see underneath. So once you get it where you need it to be, just cut it off, trim your little line there, and glue down what needs to be glued down, and you can see the basic shape. Now I have a collection of thread spools that I've thrifted and we're going to use this for the trunk of our tree. How pretty for a little vintage looking tree. Again with the masking tape, put it on the bottom so we don't melt anything. Easy enough. Description box below. Thank you so much Michelle for spoiling me with coffees. And I do mean coffees. Lots of coffees. Mmm, yummy. Thank you. Thank you. So here's our little tree and it stands up perfectly. You can add some little mini pom-poms or bells or anything you want on your tree. But I love this little foam. This came off of a piece of garland and I cut it off. It's a little foam star and it's painted gold and I think it's so pretty and the scale is just right for this little tree. It almost looks like a little Victorian tree. Maybe a little shabby chic. But you know I gotta rustic this up and I'm gonna add some greenery to it. So I'm going to take a little bit of that same mistletoe pick that I've used on our projects in part one. So be sure you watch part one. And I'm just going to cut it down and place it on the bottom and add some more of those berries that we used on the first half of the videos as well. Place that down right there. Just like that. And she is done. What a little beauty. So I chose this little polar bear from Dollar Tree and there are several different types that you can choose from. They're itty bitty, just tiny little things. Some snowflakes from Dollar Tree. These I've had in my stash for a while. Some of these snowy willow picks also from Dollar Tree. Some cedar picks. And then these are two little pieces of scraps that I had. So we're going to start off with this beautiful little white planter. And I did not check mine when I got it out of the box, and you can see there's a chip right there. So be sure that you check yours. I was just in a rush. You're going to use some floral foam to put down on the inside. Just cut a piece that's relatively the right size. And then you can just use a metal ruler or a knife to carefully remove and make it flat right on the top. Just like that. Very easy. This foam is kind of messy, so you're going to have to be sure you wipe this all back off. Clean off your surface before you go forward or it will stick on everything. So I'm just going to start with this snowy pick and put it down in here. I'm trying to get an idea of how big I want this to be and I think that that overwhelms the size of that little planter. So you can pull it apart, bunch it together, um, you can use some floral wire if you want to connect it, but I think that doing it this way is going to give me the right height that I'm looking for. I'm just going to cut apart a few of those little branches there very easy to alter these pieces you just use your wire cutters or your scissors and then cut those pieces off you want to be sure that you're going to have some variety of height it's just more interesting instead of everything being exactly the same matchy matchy um, it's not like that in nature you know so we don't want this to look landscaped in other words we want this to look uh, woodsy rustic and you know kind of woodland that's how I like to do it but you can always do it the way you like. Now you want to be sure that you cover up that foam on the inside so it just looks better that way. And if you use full enough pieces, you can certainly cover that up. I just cut a piece down and then put it right there and it also helps kind of disguise that chip. Same goes with these gorgeous glittery picks. Um, you will see in my crafting I don't do much glitter, but I think that it is appropriate in the winter time and at Christmas time 
um, to use a little sparkle, just like snow sparkles, right? Okay, so then we're gonna make a pick with these. I don't want this to look flimsy, so I'm gonna just layer these two together and cut your little strings off because these are actually um, sold as Christmas ornaments. You can use the little clear ones that you can see up there in the right hand corner if you want, whatever you wanna use, but I, I like the silver for this. So I'm just gonna use some um, hot glue and a pick that I got the, um, the cedar pick. I just cut that off the bottom and we're gonna use that as a pick because it's glittery, so it's gonna match perfectly. Add some hot glue on here. Carefully protect your fingers. If there's even a slight chance you might get glue on yourself, these glue guns get super hot. Okay, so we're gonna add some more here and just kind of sandwich this in here. Almost like making a cookie pop. Glue that down, and if you feel like you need a little more glue between the other pieces that are sticking out, you can go ahead and do that too, but you have to be very careful because um, your exposure to getting glue all over you is definitely there when you start getting micromanagey on your snowflake. So just pressing it together to make sure the glue is sticking to all three of those surfaces, and I'm gonna see where I want it to go in my arrangement. I know that I want it to be sort of in the middle and I'm, I'm trying to show this to you at a slight angle. And so it's crooked to begin with, but then I do kind of lean it a little bit like that. And now I think that looks a little bit better. You can do whatever you like. I like the look of this. I think it's a cute little arrangement. It would be nice on a desk. It'd be a nice little gift to give. You've seen the final ones. Which one? <laughs> All right, on to project number three. We're going to use some of this Rust-Oleum paint. We're going to use another pick. My E6000 again. A little hot glue. This cute little tray that I got from Dollar Tree with the truck on it. And then I have some ribbon from the thrift store. This plaid, it's not the same as the check that's on the truck, but that doesn't matter, it's okay. This is some Dollar Tree ribbon, and then some more Dollar Tree ribbon. Cute. I used this in another project for fall, and I'm going to reuse it. I'm gonna cut off this hanger, because we will not use it in this, and then take this wheel out and spray paint it. The front one time and the back one time. While that is drying, we're gonna go ahead and fix our little a way, we need a way to attach this to the wreath, so we're going to do it with these pipe cleaners. I'm using a little bit of E6000 along with some hot glue because, like we said before, hot glue is going to pop off of metal a lot of times. So just be sure that you're keeping that in mind when you do your projects because it's very frustrating to get done and then have things falling apart. So I'm going to put a clamp on here to hold it because I want to be sure that my E6000 is sticking down like it should. And Dollar Tree has a, um, a comparable adhesive that you can use if you would rather use that. If that's what you have, you can use that. And then I'm going to clamp it down until it is dry. I gave that a day to dry. And my wheel is now dry. And I'm going to just lay this down and figure out kind of where I want it to be. And flip it over and just wrap around those spokes for the wheel. And I'll tell you this, and you're gonna notice this later when I'm putting the greenery on, this thing will break easily. Now I'm surprised I didn't break it with the first one that I did, but this time I actually do break it and I fix it. So be sure you're paying attention because you wanna be sure, I don't want anybody to give up on their project just because they have a bump in the road. You can fix little errors like that. So I know that I want these to wrap around like this, and they're gonna be connected with this piece of, um, this floor wire. And you'll see here, see how it's broken? How that little spoke is apart from there? I just slid it down, that piece of greenery started to wrap, and then when I wrap the greenery down and get it somewhat secure, I'm gonna wrap around right there to catch that spoke. 
and then wrap it back and forth and back and forth to hold that spoke right there in place. And then you can secure it with a little bit of hot glue and it won't come apart. See, that was easy to fix, wasn't it? Now I'm gonna overlap these and with any additional wire I have, I'll just use that and I'll add more wire when needed and then just continue to wrap just like this. Now the greenery that I'm using is good greenery. It's from Walmart, but it is a good, it's a very good quality, the feel of it. It just feels like it's good quality. It does have some gaps where I have wrapped it and it's kind of flattened out where I've wrapped it. So that's not a problem either. We're just gonna pull another one of those picks apart and then overlap those pieces, just like that. And these are the pieces that just pop, the plastic pieces, they pop right off the wire. You just pull them, sometimes when you're arranging, they fall off. It's that easy to do. So you're just gonna use those and add those along the way in any spots that look bare or that need a little more fullness. And then one more piece, I thought maybe one above the truck would look nice and it is going in the opposite direction and I did intend for it to go that way. Um, if that bothers you, you can certainly do yours, you know, in another direction or cover the entire wreath if you like. Now I just use that stem to wrap around the wheel and then I'm using my wires to wrap that around there as well. Then just a little bit more on the top and holds it in place. And then like I said, go ahead and go back and put more on where you feel like you need to put more on. Alright, so, so far so good. Now we want to add a bow, and I'll tell you, this bow is very easy to make. You're just going to fold it over on itself several times, and I end up with this pattern of ribbon. I have three loops on one side and two loops on the other side. I just miscounted. It happens sometimes, but you know you go with it, right? We work with it. Then I'm going to take this Dollar Tree ribbon and do the same thing. Just fold it over and over and over until I have at least two loops on one side and two loops on the other side. Or folds, depends on how you look at it. I'm gonna cut a piece of this ribbon right here and it's just gonna be used to attach it together to the frame. All right, this is gonna look like a little bow tie, see there? Squeeze it up, pinch it up, and then decide what, if you want the pattern of the solid color on top. I'm gonna to put my pattern on top like that and then I'll be using a zip tie to close it off. You can use whatever you would like to do this to you know, hold your bow together, whatever you like. And then once I have that bow secured, I'm just folding it in half and sliding that down before I tighten it all the way. Make sure it's even in the middle. I can start fluffing this out. And of course, once I start fluffing it out, that's when I realize hey, I have extra loops that I didn't think I had. So, happy mistakes, yes. And I'm just gonna pull them all apart. You know how to fluff a bow? That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna fluff them all out. Uh, I think I ended up with five loops on the bottom too. Hmm. Okay, so I'm just gonna use this to wrap around the center and then secure it to the frame right in that open spot. You flip it over and tie it in a few knots. So easy to do. And now we're gonna work on the tails. This is about 18 inches here. I'm just gonna fold this over and dovetail it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the red plaid. Then I'm gonna stack the red plaid on top, pinch it together, place it down in the center of that piece of ribbon that tied it to the frame, and I'm just gonna tie that in a few knots. And that's what's gonna be our tails. And because we use wired ribbon, it's gonna stand up and stand out and look very pretty for us. So I'm gonna pull these tails through the frame. You can curl these with your fingers. You can tuck them around and under floral. I've, I've tucked that plaid one there you see behind the truck. I just pressed it down behind there, and then this red, I don't know, is this metallic? A metallic ribbon. I'm looking to see the right side of it, and there we go. I just flipped it over, very easy, and then I'm just going to feed it through the wire here, and do the same thing on a different spoke. 
with that plaid. Isn't that cute? I like the way that looks. But you can do yours any way you like. Now I'm going to use a little mini ornament from, I think it originally came from Walmart, one of my viewers told me, and put that there. It's going to be on our door. Then I'm going to trim down this ribbon, and we're going to make a little bitty bow. I've seen people make these bows before, like on a fork, and they're really cute, like a real tiny bow, but I'm just going to do mine like the breast cancer awareness um, tie. I'm going to do it like that and then I'm going to tie that extra piece that we cut off right around the center. Just like that. A couple of knots make sure it doesn't slip out. Then I'm going to flatten it with my fingers a little bit and decide how short I want the tails to be. Trim them down a bit. Now we're going to glue down that little mini ornament. I'm just wiping that glitter off of there. Press it down and then you can certainly use your E6000 there too. And then put my little bow right over the hole. And I decided that I still wanted to use a little bit of this ribbon. So I'm going to make, you can make a ribbon like that, a bow like that, or you can flip it around like I did the other ones. Flip it around a few times, and we're going to have four loops when this bow is done. Easy. We're going to use a piece of jute. We're going to fold it in half, find our center, tie it off, and then we can tie it on top of the other bow. Really, really, really easy to do. We didn't even have to notch these bows. All right, so again, pull those loops out. You can trim the tails that are on the inside because we don't have intentional tails in here. So you can cut those off, make them a little shorter, just like I'm doing, so that they don't get in the way. And we can plop that little, looks like a four leaf clover, right in the middle, wrap it around, and just tie that jute where it is at. Now that thing should be very secure in there. But like I said, feel free to use a little bit of hot glue if you need to to make sure that it doesn't move around. Mine is staying there fine. And I think that that extra ribbon really did the trick. It really brightened up that top part and I like it a lot. So now we need a hanger. We're gonna flip it over and use another little piece of pipe cleaner. I ran out of white, so that's why I'm using the brown. And just wrap it, twist it around there. And then move over just a little bit on the other side of that spoke and go ahead and wrap it again. And now you have a little hanger and it is hidden behind the greenery. Go ahead and trim off any extra wire that you have back there just to keep it from scratching up your wall or your door, wherever you're going to put it. And there you go. Okay, so the last one, pretty easy. We're gonna take one of these box bags from Dollar Tree. One side is kind of shiny and the other side is flat. And I decided that for my purposes, I'll use the flat side. This came off of a thrifted sign and then I have some Jenga blocks. Also some paint stir sticks. Plus I have this wood tint. It is a gray color and this is a home decor, um, kind of a stain and it came from uh, plaid. So I'm gonna protect my surface. I'm just using my cutting mat here and a old brush a little chippy brush and I'm just gonna start laying on this stain it's a stain not a paint but it doesn't have a funky smell um, yeah I'm real sensitive to that kind of thing it didn't make me cough it didn't make me wheeze it was great I'm going over the bar here all of the little beads which are so easy to paint because they're on that string just like that and then after a little while, I went ahead and wiped this off. And the longer you leave it, the darker it's going to be. And you can layer it to make it even darker. When it dries, it is darker. But just to show you a difference, you can see the gray in there. Yeah, it's pretty. I think it looks really good. We're going to do the same over here with drying those beads really well. And then look how easy the cleanup is. So easy. That's a dry paper towel. And then all you have to do is use a, a damp towel and wipe it up. 
I'm going to start cutting this box. You can use a cutter, but I thought my scissors might work a little better. And I felt a little more comfortable and confident that I wouldn't cut myself doing it this way. You're just going to go ahead and be sure you don't cut too close in on the picture that you're going to use. So the side you're using, rather. Go ahead and use your, your trimmer or your whatever you want to use to cut. And try to get that edge as straight as you possibly can. Don't worry um, if you didn't get your lines exactly straight because stuff's going to be covered. You see this is paper on top of this cardboard. It's going to peel away a little bit, or it did on me anyway. You can use a glue stick and just press that right back down. You'll never even know. Just press it down. You can use a tool to push it down. It'll be great. I had a little tear here when I was cutting. Totally fixed that too. I'm going to take some jute to just kind of trim out that side. You can see it's kind of raggedy looking. I'm going to carefully, carefully, and very slowly, put a line of glue down this side and then just let it overlap on the ends so I don't get it too short and go all the way down. I'm sorry I'm out of frame here. I'm going to go all the way down on both sides the same way to secure it. And then now we're going to take our paint sticks, which are dry now. We're going to mark where we want them to be cut. And then I'm going to easily score this with that same blade that I used to trim up everything else. I'm just scoring that wood, making some little tracks in there. And then do it on the edges too, flip it over on the back, do it on the other edge, same thing. And then you can snap it in half, just like that, perfect. Take a little bit of sanded paper and you just start rubbing that down and kind of, I kind of rocked it back and forth so I would have a little bit of a curve on the edges like it is on the other end. And there they are finished. So this is gonna be the top and the bottom. A little bit of hot glue, we're gonna put the bottom on and I'm just trying to center it and get it as far down as I can so we can really see the sign without covering too much up. And I think that gray looks really good with the background. What do you think? We're gonna do the same thing with the top. And then go across here. Very hot glue. Love my glue gun. Okay, so you're just going to press that down and know my fingers are not touching the glue. And then you're going to let it dry. Because it'll stick on everything if you don't. And then here it is when it is finished. I love you. Alright, so I got a stack of these from Goodwill, and I'm just going to be using one of these as our background today. It is five and a half inches. You use what you have. I've got a couple of stars to choose from and this 3D kit. I've chosen to use the Nativity, but you can certainly use the snowman or the woods if this is not something that interests you. This is a cherry paint marker or a furniture repair marker and a little bit of spray paint. This is in like a black, almost black. So I'm gonna spray paint the ornament part and put it out to dry, and then we're gonna use this furniture repair marker to stain our gorgeous little nativity. I'm gonna go all around in this darker color, and then when we get to baby Jesus, we're gonna do something just a little bit different for him. So we got the wise men and Joseph, and the bottom of this manger is going to be the dark color. And then I'm going to choose the oak marker, which is a little bit lighter, and put it on the top part. And that's where little baby Jesus is asleep. So, you can use brown paint if you don't have a furniture marker. I'm just showing you. Be sure you color in all your little white spots so that nothing shows. We're going to take a star, whichever star you choose, if it is a galvanized star. And mine came off of a 4th of July sign from Dollar Tree, so... I'm reusing that. Just take a little bit of the antique wax and to keep it in the rustic theme, we're just going to dull it down a little bit and give it a little bit of age. Simple enough. It took very little of that stain to make that work. And you're going to let it dry. So here are our pieces all ready to be worked with. I'm going to take my sanding block 
and those come from Dollar Tree. They're really, really good. I do recommend them. They're in two different grits or two different grains. Just like that. Now we have our little edges knocked off. Gives it a little more of a rustic look. I have some E6000, and the container is like a little jewelry container, but I believe it's made of the same thing. It works the same way, but it has a tiny little hole, so it's really easy to work with on small projects like this. I'm going to use a little hot glue for a quick hold until the other glue has a chance to set up. And I'm going to press it down, get it in the right spot, and then give it a chance to set up. And once the glue is dry, carefully slide the pieces in. I know I want the manger to be in the background. And then I'm going to put the wise man in there. Then I'll add in Joseph and Mary and baby Jesus. And then they're not glued in, so they can easily be moved around, but they do stay in place fairly well, at least on the particular one I have. Now we're going to add our star. A little hot glue will work for this, but you can certainly use a little bit of E6000 or whatever type of adhesive that you want to use that works for you. And then put that down right on top of where the other star was on the manger. Alright, so if you just like simple modern, this might be the thing for you and you might be complete. But I want to add a little bit more, so I'm just taking some of this ribbon that I got, I believe either from Walmart or Dollar General last year on clearance. And we're just going to place that down kind of as a little border or edge covering, you know, where that wood was showing, the layers were showing. And then I'm going to wrap it around and neatly trim it and glue it down. To hang this, to make it a large Christmas tree ornament, or I guess medium, medium large, large for my tree, we'll put it that way. We're going to make a little bow on here and a hanger. So the first part we're going to do is the bow, and it's just, we're looping it over so that we have two pieces on one end, two pieces on the other end, just like this. Again, trim it off. Then we're going to cut another little piece, and we're going to use it to tie around the middle to make the tails. You can do a shoestring bow, shoelace bow, whatever you call it, any way that you want to do it. You can just flip those around and fluff the little ears out. And you'll have two loops on each side. Some jute would be really pretty here also, if you like. A little bit of hot glue is going to hold this in place right underneath the little shelf. And then we need to trim up the tails. And if you need to glue your little bow down, you can certainly do that on the little loopy part. So to make a tie or a hanger, we're going to just take another piece of that ribbon Tie one knot in the end, and then you can just easily put that on the back with a little bit of hot glue, right behind where the top of the ornament would be. Look just like that. And that's how that would look. Click the box below for more, and thanks for stopping by. Bye!